this is a game that we at CBS have been waiting for since the schedule was released in the spring. Buffalo and Tampa Bay coming up in your national doubleheader window. And hello, friends. Jim Nance, Tony Romo, Tracy Wolfson, and all the crew. You got the Super Bowl champs hosting a Buffalo team that comes in here frustrated, yet we found out through our meetings very focused for this occasion. Oh, they better be focused. Last week, that did not sit well with anyone. Division rival for the division lead, and all of a sudden you're at home. You have a chance to really say, this is us, it's our time, and they lost. They're focused this week. I can tell you, everyone in that we talked to, they're ready to come in here and beat the champs. They're ready. It hasn't been easy, though, ever to beat Tom Brady for Buffalo. All-time nemesis, 32-3. and three against the Bills. Yeah, it's unbelievable. This is such a tall task for the Bills today. Tom Brady has got this offense rolling on all cylinders, and he's so dominant at home, Jim. I mean, some of the numbers, it's crazy. He always has the pencil last. He's going to get to the right play. This is a tall task, though, for a Bills team who's coming in focused. And speaking of that focus, again, Josh Allen told us just yesterday, we're trying to prove to ourselves more than anyone, and we've had a fantastic week of preparation. Yes, they have. And coming in here, you cannot have those little mistakes. Right now, they just need to do a better job in the key and crucial situations. That's how they're going to win games against the best teams. Because the Bills are one of the best teams. They just need to show it. And they need a game like this to provide it so everyone believes it. There you go, Tony. Before kickoff, we go down to you, Tracy. Well, Jim, when we spoke with Josh Allen yesterday, he said, I know Bills Mafia wants me to hate Tom Brady, but I can't. He said, I grew up a California kid. I grew up idolizing him and wearing his jersey. Now, every time he steps on the field with Brady, he says it is just surreal. They have met four times, yet he has not beaten Brady. He knows time is running out. No better time than today, Jim. All right, well, he grew up in Fireball. Tom grew up in San Mateo, 140 miles apart out there on the west coast yeah it's a beautiful afternoon here in tampa 81 degrees that game monday night i'm sure you saw it it's in the 30s wind chill in the 20s brutal conditions far different story here today just ideal yeah that's slightly different for a quarterback I mean, oh yeah a lot of talk last week about the bills they ended up throwing the ball, had some success late. Could they have gotten to that earlier? I think you're going to see him throw it a lot today, Jim. And I think we'll see Tampa against the Buffalo defense, just a hunch, throw it more than three times. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're exactly right. <laughs> but I'm going to I'm going to go on a limb and say you're right. All right. I like to take those uh, hot takes, you know, really <laughs> deep. Here's the kick. Buffalo deferred here at the top. Darden's the returner. Darden trying that left sideline and runs out of real estate. Poyer there to push him out. So they say, let's give the football to Tom Brady first. We'll take it in the third. And since last Thanksgiving Sunday, when they lost in the regular season to Kansas City, again, regular season before beating them here in the Super Bowl, they've gone 8 and 0 in this building since that game the last weekend of November a year ago. And they put up big points every single time. In fact, over 30 every home game this year undefeated. Hunter Johnson, the extra receiver, to join Evans and Godwin. And they move Fournette out of the backfield. And it's a wide snap. Brady trying to fall on it. And he's able to. My goodness, there was a, years ago a season opening game in New England where something very similar happened. Buffalo got a takeaway against Brady in the first play of the game and scored a touchdown. And I don't know if there were flashbacks for Brady, but very nearly a takeaway by the Bills on the very first snap. This is huge for Buffalo coming into this game. You've got to get a lead, right? Every team comes in here. They play on the Buccaneers' terms. Brady goes down. They score. They take the lead, and all of a sudden, you get behind in this quarter, and then you got to start pressing. That's a huge play right there. They lost 14. Brady able to recover it. And now looking to sling it. What a stick by Milano on Godwin. And we told you this Buffalo team, at least coming in in these first couple of plays, fired up, gain of six. Here's the Buccaneer offensive line. Ryan Jensen, the center, that snap getting away from them on that first play of the game. Smith and Wirfs, the tackles, they've been solid. Only 14 times in over 500 pass attempts has Brady this year been sacked. Third down, third and 18. That Rockers out in front. And Godwin has stopped about four yards short. Boy, he had a whole brigade out in front of him, but 
The Bills able to converge, hold them to a 15-yard gain, and it's going to be three plays and a punt. That's where the fumble was so big on that first yep. play because this Buccaneer offense, they just matriculate down the field. They can create big plays. The wide receiver screen that you saw there has really been ramped up recently, and that's helped this offense because it's really hard to pressure now when you can create a big play like that whenever they want it. Penyon is the punter. They got two returners back deep for Buffalo, McKenzie and Stevenson. It's the rookie Stevenson. And he has three bucks on him right away, including Grant Stewart. 55 yard punt. Great job by Pinion for the Buccaneers. And here comes Josh Allen. His numbers again, they are just super. Over 3,000 yards passing, over 400 yards rushing. And again, his conference call with us yesterday telling us we're such a better team. Then this, what he called, sort of a seven-game skid, whatever you want to call it, he said. They've gone loss, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss. That's three and four. Singletary, the starting running back. They have Moss inactive for the game, and they'll get it to Singletary right away. They only pick up a yard. That's Dean coming in on him quickly. The offense for the Bills. What are you looking for out of them today, Tony? Well, I think the biggest thing, you talked about this team being good. They're, they're better than good. This team is really good. They just haven't won in a couple of the critical areas and critical points. And really, Josh Allen is having a fantastic year, but everyone sees a record. But Sean McDermott, this defense is phenomenal. You, you saw it in the first drive, Jim. This is strength versus strength. That defense versus Tampa's out. But this offense is loaded, and you're going to see them change up a few things today. Here's a second and nine. Got an open man of Singletary. He's got another catch. He's got a first down. The Bucks defense of Todd Bowles. Just really good against the run. They came into the week just one yard more allowed than what the Ravens had. So they came in as the second best rush defense. They've led the league the last two years. And the secondary with Murphy Bunting, Davis back up. It's been a mixed bag for them because of injuries this year. And they've got Whitehead inactive today because of a calf injury the free safety. Todd Bowles done an incredible job with all the corners being out and being able to protect them. Different kind of blitzes you see here. First and 10. Pass batted and complete. That was Adams coming up from the secondary. And he got a hand on it. Adams 26 going to blitz off the edge. Comes flying in. Two guys, only one blocker. Got to navigate it right there. Josh just doesn't get it up high enough. At this point, Josh thinking, do I catch it? What do I do? Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. That was the best decision. No doubt. Let it go. No fun catching your own passes when you're in the NFL quarterback. <laughs> no, it is not a good thing. Very few good things happen from that. Second and ten. Three plays, all of them. The pass plays in the direction of the Singletary. Pressure. No chance with four Buccaneers all over him, including Adams coming up again, along with Shaq Barrett. Well, and Josh Allen just gets fooled on the right side. You'll see the blitz coming off the edge. These two guys, watch how many guys can block them. Only one blocker, miscommunication. Really, that's a rookie right tackle there. And the difference, honestly, that's not Josh Allen's fault. The communication, Brown didn't get out. On it, they didn't communicate. You know why, Jim? Because these fans right here, they got really loud. They didn't allow him to communicate all the way down through the line. Richard Sherman takes the field. Coming off of IR. And here's Allen dumping it off at the last moment before he went down. And it's Singletary. And again, look at all the helmets that are on the football to end that series after one first down picked up by Buffalo. Gain of 12. And out will come the punter. This is going to be a great game. I mean, if you're a fan of football, you've got two dominant defenses, right? One against the run. The Bills are dominant in all areas. I mean, they are unbelievable against the pass. They don't give up big plays. But this, you know, Buccaneers front seven is as good as we've seen in a while in the NFL. And they've done it week in, week out. It's going to be the quarterback making plays, Jim, and not turning the ball over. Pop the punter. Driving it back to Darden at the 23. 
And a little seam to jump ahead to about the 33. 10 yard run back after a 44 yard punt. Buffalo and Tampa Bay underway. We're glad to see Taiwan Jones able to walk to the sideline, but it was a brutal shot to the side of the knee for the 11 year veteran who's made quite a career of himself being an ultimate teammate, backup running back, but primarily a special teamer. So, second possession coming up for the Bucks. that left side for about four the Buffalo defense has a lot of things going for it Tony now we know that New England ran it 46 times against them Monday night they allowed one big run 222 yards total on those 46 carries been tough against the pass all year and this one complete to Mike Evans It'll be third and two coming up yeah they're very stingy they do a great job and we're going to talk about the disguise of the defense no one does it better than Sean McDermott and Leslie Frazier before the snap Tom Brady loves to get to the right play but so far in this game like he's see this no huddle that's so that way they can't hide it Jim they did the same thing against that man and heard him last week Brady's so tough sees the opening of the defense had just third and two he's got it first down at the 48 that is Godwin with yet another catch and let's get back to kind of your breakdown of the game with the Romo report well you got to change the picture Buffalo Bills defense the Buccaneers they take what they give you Tom knows where the weakness is in every defense Bills disguise 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 you'll see these safeties over and over again on the outside they're going to move around he'll be here and then he'll move right at the snap he's here he's going to move First down, he's got the time and tried to connect with Fournette incomplete. Milano in the coverage. So a guy like Tom Brady basically is like the best coach on the field ever, right? Because he knows as much as any coach in the league on the offensive side of the ball, and he knows what your defense are trying. So he knows the weakness in cover one, three, four. So all he needs to do is know what you're in, and then his eyes start there. And if you can disguise that, he may not be able to start his eyes in the right spot. And Leslie Frazier has a plan for that today. Here's a second and 10. Takes a little something off of it. And they're going to have a flag as Evans was the target. And it's going to be against the Bills secondary at about the 42 yard line. Prior to the pass, holding defense, number 21. Five yard penalty, automatic. First down. Hoyer call on the hold. He had 24 right there. You see the hold, yep. It's going to get called every time. And here's why Tom, he's looking for this safety. What's he doing? Because if he sees him come down, you run right over the top of him. Boom. The more you can disguise that, Jim, the later he'll get to that spot. That was on Johnson. And it's Burnett. Look at Burnett go. Hides. The only guy that can stop him, but does not. Shoves him into the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Well, you want to know what the problem with disguising the safeties, Jim? <laughs> They're going to be late to fit in the gap. Now you have one less guy who's down there. You're trying not to give up the big plays in the run game. The weakness is the run. The weakness in disguise is the run defense. And you see right there, the problems still continue. The Colts, the Patriots, and now early in the game, very similar to the Patriots last week, the long run. How about a 47-yard run is what it is. Longest of the season by a bunch. 28 had been the long for Fournette before that one. That's the first rush touchdown for Tampa Bay of 30 yards or longer. Just any kind of rush, not just a touchdown. First 30 yard carry is 47 to be exact and a touchdown. Look at the Sunshine Skyway Bridge and Leonard Fournette taking the bridge to the end zone. 47 yards, his longest run as a buck. 67 yards. They take it in five plays. They call this 
guy right here speedy just his second game up Marquez Stevenson rookie drafted out of the University of Houston same thing that I call you <laughs> yeah. it fits you know it fits to help people affected by the tornadoes the tragic tornadoes from Friday night into Saturday morning the southern and Midwest tornadoes you can help them by texting to 90999 to give ten dollars to the American Red Cross Southern and Midwest Tornado Relief Fund. Hearts go out to all the folks in that region of the country, Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, just awful. Prayers going up for everyone. Here's a first and ten. Diggs. Wide receiver screen. Trying to get around Pierre Paul. He's got a gain of about six. Now you discuss what you thought the Bucks would do against that Buffalo defense. Let's flip it now. What about the Bills on offense? Well, you see first down right there. I like throwing it early and often. They have a ton of weapons, and they need to get back to Diggs, Beasley, run this offense through there. Knox is a really great player. He's going to be phenomenal as he continues to grow up. And I feel like Josh Allen is having a great year. It's just one of those things where it's like they got to just be who they are. It's like sometimes they do a little too much. It's like they can almost simplify it. But throw it on first down. It's really hard to stop this team. They throw it every down. Rolling out. And the blocker in front. There goes Allen. He's got the first down. The run over a defender. And out to the 44. He was running behind Mitch Morris's center. And Spencer Brown, the right tackle, and picks up 14. And it's just, this is where their offensive coordinator does a great job, Brian Dable. He actually gets these designed runs from passing formations. Most people get in, like, running formations, right? Am I using it? But this is just like, hey, they're going to throw the ball. And this was a huge point of emphasis for Tampa Bay this week. we got to stop this. They do it so well. It looks like a pass, and they just turn and run it. They get 15, 20. Obviously, they didn't do it well enough. And first down, they go to Beasley this time. And he's got to pick up of about four. And I, I love this because we're talking about one of the great, you know, teams against the run three years in a row. Why do we keep trying to do that just to... And go in there and get two, three yards. Throw the ball. Those could be big plays. That's the same as a running play, but you have an opportunity to not go against their strength inside. The only rush so far for Buffalo was that design run play for Allen a moment ago that went for 14. A second and seven. Pressure coming from the edge. And Allen gets sacked for the second time, and again, Barrett's in on the play. Now, this Shaquille Barrett is unbelievable, Jim. I mean, this is an undrafted player in Denver for five years as he beats Brown around the edge with that speed. Since they've got the last two and a half years, Jim, he's got 35 sacks, now 36. That's tied with Miles Garrett, and only T.J. Watt has more. And think about it. They only paid him $72 million over four years, and I say only. That's like $50 million less than what T.J. Watt. The production he's giving them, that's a steal. It's a great job by their front office. Got a sack and a half already in this opening quarter. It's third and eight. Allen's pass, he got rid of it as they were blitzing again. Intended for Davis. And the Bills offense will come off the field again. Yeah, it's just well done outside. Good technique. 35 Dean. Not allowing anyone to get on top, pushing them all the way to the sideline, throws behind, and those early hits kind of add up, you know, as the game moves on for quarterbacks. Well, you're talking about Shaq Barrett, of course, undrafted out of Colorado State and the Broncos when they brought him to camp. He had some guys he could learn from. <laughs> they had guys like Marcus Ware and Vaughn Miller. Pretty soon he was in their league. Goes out of bounds, the Hawk punts. By the way, Tywan Jones was back on the field on that special teams play. There he is trotting out of frame. 39-yard punt. Brady and the Bucks got to the end zone in a hurry the last time they had it. Welcome back to Raymond James Stadium here in Tampa, a city that's hosted five Super Bowls. We were in this perch earlier this year to see this guy win for the seventh time, February 7th. Super Bowl 55 as Fournette adds another four. Brady stats against the Bills. Well, 
Most wins all time by any quarterback versus any single opponent. 70 pass touchdowns. It's the third most all-time by a quarterback against a single opponent. The record is 72. Marino against the Jets and Tom against Miami. So he can break today if he had three by days in. A record that he shares at 72 with one of the legends of the game. Another legend of the game. Here's a second and six. Do you think he gets one today or? I think, it's tough, I think the odds are pretty high. You know what's crazy? If all the games, though, this would actually be the game. Buffalo's defense only has given up eight passing touchdowns all year. That's it. Second, said the second oh. least would be 14. Yes. Yeah, only eight. Here they sneak. That's an old Brady specialty there. The quarterback sneak for the first down. So if he got three, though, which is what he would need. Oh, Brady getting up. Look at this. I'm getting fired up early in this game. I don't see a flag on our feet. I'm looking for one. I didn't like this at all. Oh, uh, yeah. I think, it, I think Hughes is the guy he wanted to be mad at, not Addison. No. No, that was actually uh, Ed Oliver, not Oliver. First and 10. Hughes was coming from the backside. He felt it, and he slides up ahead to the 39 to match his longest run of the season, 13. Tom Brady's going to go ahead and scan the field, slide up. No one has a sixth sense like he does. He knows when to run. It's funny how he does it all the time, right when it's needed. Showing off those wheels. Once, that's a, once a month. That's the guy we should be calling Speedy. He's <laughs> first to 10. Rock gets into the act. Here another first down. They get pressure, find Gronk right away. Everyone's coming out the middle. Gronk's been around so long, he knows not to run the full route. Make it go quickly right there for Net, who's turned into a really good three down back. When he first got here, he was really a first and second down back. Here he is on second down. He's needed a foot for the first, and he's got it with a little to spare. You see how Tampa's going no huddle here. This has really been a big thing They've gone to huddle plenty of times for it, but they're actually making this a focal point. They're doing it really early in games. Second drive today, same thing Atlanta last week. A little success in some of these teams trying to, you know, hide it. But Byron Leftwich right there, done a great job morphing this team into who they are, and they're getting better and better if that's possible. Bring in Ronald Jones at running back for Fournette. There's Godwin. So I should do that defense and shut down a bounds near the 30. His fourth catch here of the quarter. He's coming off a 15 catch game, a franchise record. Tom's going to scan the field right here. Look, very calm and just comes back underneath. He's looking off all these guys out there. His eyes. And Godwin last week against Atlanta, 15 for 143. Time for time to go long to Gronk. Knocked down at the last moment. Well played by Jordan Poyer. Poyer's having an excellent year. Five interceptions. No one wants to go one-on-one -on -one down the field with Gronk. Poyer with poise at the end. You notice he didn't grab, push. I mean, there's always a little bit of contact, but he did a good job of not... And then he had to turn around. You see how he turned around, Jim? If you don't turn around, it's pass interference. It's pass interference. He that's, did a perfect job of that turning around. Just the right moment. That's like good coaching and good, you know, technique by the player understanding that. Second and ten. Linda, Linda, Linda. Linda. It's a blitz. Picked up again. Johnson with the catch. And he's got a gain of about seven. It's update time. Let's go back to the studio in New York. Here's how the Chargers cap a nine play 60 yard drive. Yeah, Justin Herbert to Josh Palmer from 12 yards out. The LA Chargers take a lead over New York Giants 14 to seven. Back to Jim Nance. JB and the coach, thank you so much. We had a third and two here. Bucks driving again. Stepping up, gonna run for it again. Butts heads and reaches across 
for the necessary yardage and a new set of downs. Made a little move there at the end against Obata to pick up the first, his third rushing first down of the quarter. Watch this, go run through this. This is what makes Brady amazing. This guy's gonna get him, but look at this little instinctful move right there. He got his leverage going that way just by looking and making his body leverage. Tom does that in the pocket all day long. That's the same thing he does to move people with his eyes because he's slow, right? He can't actually make someone miss. It's because he uses his eyes and his body weight. Here's a first down throw out of the backfield before net. Down the sideline and diving down near the three yard line and a block up ahead for him by Godwin to help that go for about 16. Godwin took out a couple of defenders. <laughs> I mean, Godwin looked like the water boy on that one. If you watch this play, Godwin's going to literally go up and block two different guys and to have star receivers who are willing to do the dirty work. That can separate you. Well done. Bucks, they've been dominant in the first quarter at home. Going back over the last nine games. They got the 7-0 edge after one here, and they're right at the door again. First and goal to start the second quarter. Numbers dominated by Tampa Bay through the first 15 minutes. I actually thought this was going to be the key to the game, right? You got red zone defense, the Bills are fourth, they're incredible. Red zone offense, the Buccaneers are incredible. I thought this right here was going to be the key, whether or not Buffalo could hold them to three. Brady, at the end zone, stepping up again, and he's sacked for the first time in this game. Really well coached Buffalo Bills defense. Sean McDermott, one of the great defensive minds, adds Leslie Frazier. Together, they're very difficult to deal with. Anku. Eli Anku is the one who took Brady down. Tom rushing in that first quarter for three first downs. His first time he's done that in a quarter in 10 years. Two scrambles and then that sneak on third and one as well. They bring Gronk near outside. Bottom of your screen. Hand it off to Fournette. They stuff him at the line, Tony. Your point about this Buffalo red zone defense. Can they get through this next play? Third and goal from five yards out. But well, watch this. This is what Tom's looking at. If he's one-on-one, -on -one, he's going to throw a fade. Buffalo decides to double-team him. Tom can hand it off or throw it. He sees that. You get the numbers. If Buffalo can do that in this game, Jim, they're going to force you to hand the ball off, and you got to play well up front. Leslie Frazier, Frazier's team needing a stop right here. Third and goal for Tampa Bay. Crushed, throwing, back to the end zone, incomplete. And there it is, Buffalo with that stingy defense. That was huge. That gives your team a chance. Very hard to do against Tampa, especially at home. Harrison Phillips, one of those providing the pressure that made Tom leave the pocket. Phillips having a good year. Really, they've gotten a little younger, right? Their pass rush is a little better this year than it's been in the last couple. Getting Rousseau in the first round this year has played well. And just having some guys having a really solid year. And the Phillips pressure and others as well. Johnson on the coverage. That means out comes Sucka. For the short field goal, that is good. From 23 away. With the Bills able to hold of the three, the defense stiffens inside the five. They had the ball for 15 plays. They lead 10 nothing. Tony, you saw something in that timeout that you really liked on the Buffalo sideline. Well, you see Sean McDermott right here talking to Leslie Frazier, defense coordinator. He's like, listen, I want you to do this because here's what they're trying to do. If we can go ahead and do this, disguise it this way, this should give them trouble, okay? So you get your linebackers coach, your DBs coach, you get everyone over there. You say, now you got to go to your guys and teach them this. So it's within their system. But they're going to go ahead and change a little bit about what they've been doing and try and make it a little bit different than their plan coming in. And that's what you got to do in this game. you got to adapt and adjust within the game. A lot of coaches wait till Monday and say we should have done. That's why I think Coach McDermott is really good. Pinion able to get the touchback for the corner. Here's the AFC playoff picture. Of course, the Patriots on a bye. Tennessee wins Kansas City when you got the three teams at 9-4. and four. Patriots right now the one because of a better conference record. Buffalo went into that game Monday night, would have led the AFC East with a win, instead with a loss, dropped back to the seventh spot. This is gonna be crazy coming down the end. If you look at the, in the hunt right there, it's like, this is gonna have, I mean, wild cards are seven and five, and all the other guys are at six. 
seven, one, two. It's like you have eight teams for like three spots that all could come down to one game. First down, take the handoff from the pocket. He fires it to an open receiver, Emmanuel Sanders at midfield. Gain of 25. Now you'll see the route right here by Sanders going up, stopping inside. Just a good play call versus cover two. Watch right here. He's going to go up and pause it right now. Josh's eyes are looking right. He's going to throw back over here. Great quarterback play to move him and create that window and make it wider for him. Buffalo, 11 plays they've run. No handoffs. Well, we set throw early and often. I think they're going, to, they're going ahead and doing that. Here's the pass complete to Davis with the flag. He's got Novak's officiating crew. Legal shift on the offense, number 14 and 79. We're moving at the same time. Did not reset. It's a five-yard penalty. First down. Oh, this is a terrible call. <laughs> I think that was terrible. I was watching down there. Yeah, Carlton Davis of uh, the box was so on that it. play. So we can't see it here. It happened before that. But what hap what happens is what happens is 14 comes in motion. You can't have two people moving. So it's hard to see. It's way before everything, and I think it was a little nitpicky. Here's Carlton Davis. I mentioned shaken up on that last play. He was over there on the Buffalo sideline, and then training staff comes over to escort him back. To the Buccaneers sideline. Davis, who's had injuries this year, and big part of that uh, secondary, they need him. Football's iconic show inside the NFL is streaming Tuesdays at 9:30 on Paramount Plus. It was in the company of Rondé Barber a week ago. He's the, actually he's the tournament chairman of the PGA Tour Stop Here, the Valspar Championship. Of course, the legendary Buck that he was. Those are things too about playing corner yes he's he does. Carlton Davis who's a fourth year player had high regard for him I like him too I think he's right Barbara obviously knows one of the great DBs he was crafty he knew the game well great instincts he had it all Ross Cockrell comes in for Davis as it's a first and 15 for the Bills Mass complete right pass down to the 30 goes Diggs they had now two 25-yard pass plays on this drive. This is just Josh Allen being Josh Allen. Right here. He's in that pocket. He's already letting go. Look at that. He's going to throw this in route. Hasn't even cut yet. The anticipation and then the gun to be able to be that accurate. That's why you have yourselves a franchise quarterback, and the Bills are going to be good for a long time because of him, John. And you have yourself one of the best receivers in the game. Actually went for 24 to Diggs. McKenzie, one of those lined up in the backfield. <laughs> Allen looks up ahead. He's got Davis at the 20. Down to the 10. We've already talked on this drive twice about Josh Allen's eyes and his ability to move defenders. This was outstanding. Watch, he's going to look right. Here's throw the flat. All of a sudden, right there, 45 gets out of position. And White didn't have a chance because... I'm not supposed to be way out there. Andy looked really low. He's going to throw a flat run. It's right at the 10, so it's first and goal. Three pass plays for over 20 yards on this drive alone. It's Knox moving around now. The tight end has got seven touchdown catches this season. Allen in traffic. And he did knock back for a three-yard loss. Really prepared that time. Levante David, they were ready for this. You'll see 54 David move over. You'll see Golston, the D lineman, move over right before the snap. They were prepared for that. This is one of those red zones. This is the point of emphasis for me. This is why the Bills are not, you know, 10 and 2 right now. They're just not quite as dominant in the red zone as I think they could be, you know, and I think they need to get back to some of their simple stuff, the stuff they really like, those players they really know can make it happen. Second and goal. Going to keep it. Going to take off. Going to fight for every inch down to about the two. Before Winfield collides with him. 
He's going to look for Sanders. Cockrell does a good job guarding him, and then Allen uses his legs and shows off. You know, he's the only quarterback in the league, Jim, with over 400 rushing yards and 3,000 passing yards. It's really a testament to his overall ability. They're three yards out, we'll call it. Third and goal. Uh, one for, uh, one for five. Across the middle and over the head of Davis. We're going to kick it. Going to put points on Great the board. Great call by Todd Bowles. You'll see 98. We're going to get a guy going right behind him. He's going to rush, right, Jim? He's going to run. Nope, he backs out. And Josh Allen, oh, that's a Todd Bowles special. And he's like, oh, I can't believe. But that's what Todd Bowles does. Confuses you, makes you think something's there, it's wide open, but it's not. Tyler Bass, 21 yards away. And the Bills put up three. They got three big pass plays to get it down eventually to the three yard line before settling for a field goal. 10 3 bucks. Well, the numbers are similar for these two quarterbacks. Josh Allen, Tom Brady, Josh, who grew up down in the Central Valley area, California, huge fan of Brady's. Brady named this week for the second time the Sports Illustrated Sportsman of the Year. Told us this week how his bedroom back home in San Mateo, his young boy growing up, he used to rip the covers off and tape them up on the walls like wallpaper, effectively. Never could imagine someday he'd be just the third ever to be named Sportsman of the Year twice. Wow. And the other two, LeBron and Tiger. Tiger. Yeah. Yep. So Michael Jordan wasn't good enough to get out no, twice. Man. Okay, just one that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> gotcha. Really, I guess that is extreme. Here's, here's the next gen stats powered by AWS. No one gets the ball out faster than Tom Brady. He's one of the tops in the league at that, but he doesn't just check it down like some of the other guys who do it. He actually pushes it down the field. And then recently, they've really got this wide receiver screen game going. And this creates so many problems because Godwin's so special at run after catch. And then on top of it, you can't pressure this guy. He gets it out too quick. You throw wide receiver screens, you should not pressure him at the bottom line. And if you do, you got to surprise him when you do it. It's so, okay, you can pressure him, but you got to surprise him. Rush four. Brady has the time and the accuracy to be able to get Godwin, who actually came down to the ground to catch it for yet a fifth reception in this game already. Goes for 23. Now Brady with just a great job of dropping back, looking inside, keeps everyone. See those linebackers right there? They're just reading his eyes. Why wouldn't they get deeper? Because they're looking at Brady, and he keeps his eyes there. Great job. Godwin just went over 1,000 on the season. As Gronkowski gets a second catch. Breaks tackles down to the 32. Well, when you play with two safeties high, you're protecting outside, but inside, Gronk's going to be one-on-one. -on -one and Edmonds, Milano, these guys at linebacker for the Buccaneers are outstanding players, but Brady to Gronk, no one's stopping him one-on-one. -on -one. Run! Here's Fournette, who scored the game's only touchdown on a 47-yard burst. You were talking some of the statistical things you like when you were scouting Buffalo. They've given up coming in only 26 plays that went for 20 yards plus. That's the fewest in the league. They haven't been giving up big plays to a game over 20 yards. They did allow a 47-yard touchdown in the first quarter. Yes, and this is, I mean, this is like a strength versus strength, right? It's like this team doesn't give them up. This team creates them a ton. That's going to do Second and five. And that's intended for Perriman. Ball just wide barely. Tom's a little upset because Perriman kind of took that angle a little bit too high. He wanted him flattened down to the side, so it would have made a better angle for Tom. Brady, seven completions away from having the all-time record for completions in a career. Seven at the moment behind Drew Brees.
Third and five. And that's knocked away by Jackson, who is furious for the flag as he was trying to shut off Gronkowski from another catch. Yeah, and Jackson, I thought, did a really good job of That's interference. Off. Defense, number 30. Ball be placed by the foul. Automatic. First down. Uh, that left hand, you can't, if he wouldn't have grabbed with that left arm, put it over his shoulder, he would have been okay. That is pass interference. That's going to get called. He looks at the replay. He still doesn't see it, Tony. Well, it's the poise at the end, right? When the ball's in the air, you can see the receiver's eyes. They get big. It's coming in. Then you get nervous a little bit like, oh, I don't want him to catch it. That's where the poise and the coaching comes in. You're like, no, nope, stay calm. I'm in position. He's got to be something crazy to catch this. It's an 11-yard penalty. Back in the red zone for the Bucks. And out of the backfield, Fournette. And that's Jackson, who just got flagged, coming up and chopping Fournette. After a pickup of about five. Second and five coming up from the 13. Boy, has Fournette come on. Pickup last season, start here in the Super Bowl against Kansas City. Had a big game. Big game Lenny, they call. <laughs> and he has. You put him in some situations, he knows how to step up. Had a four-touchdown game recently against the Colts. Already got the touchdown today. Second and five. Ball in and out of the hands of Fournette. Would have had the first. The ball just comes up on him. This is Brady looking high. Comes down underneath. Fournette knew he was going to take a big shot there. And you Edmonds was waiting for him. And Tom's. Wow. What happens? Third and five. Two straight red zone stands for Buffalo. That's the key to the game. I thought coming in was that part of it as much as the disguise. So we're going to find out this is a big. One to the end zone. And it's pulled down. What a catch. Mike Evans. Oh, my goodness. He just rose the ladder and went up. Over. And Mike Evans. Who's having an outstanding year this year as well. These safeties are really tough to go against. Had a perfect angle, but this ball, only someone like Brady and Evans, can this actually be caught? Brady takes a shot right when he throws it and still puts it one inch, two inches over Hyde's hands where only Evans could get it. Oh, how do you defend that? I mean, that was like getting a stop, but sorry, that was uh, Evans and Brady. And Mike Evans now with nine touchdowns in the last five home games. That's 699, by the way, for Tom, all time, regular and post. Evans won't make the same mistake this time if he catches another one <laughs> for number 700. He gave this one away, but not the next one if there is one. I can promise you that. So, 13 yards to number 13. Jim, that Tom, since he's joining the Bucks, has 53 touchdowns and no interceptions. In the red, red zone. zone. I mean, that is an absurd stat. Since he's been here, 53 touchdowns, no picks. And that doesn't include in the red zone. What about postseason, too? Oh, yeah. 60, 60 touchdowns and no picks. That's that's a quarterback you should go get. Stevenson. Thrown <laughs> down by Minter at the 25. Considered the league's most prestigious honor, the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. Recognizing players who have exhibited excellence on the field and their passion that impacts lives beyond the game. This year's nominee for Buffalo is Harrison Phillips for Tampa Bay. It is Mike Evans. The NFL Man of the Year will be announced Super Bowl week at NFL Honors Thursday, February 10th. You can learn about all of this year's nominees by visiting NFL.com slash Man of the Year. Well done. Phillips and Evans do so much in their communities.
blitz. Allen's able to step up away from it. Pick up nine to Knox, and we go down to Tracy. Well, Jim, this is the third straight year Mike Evans is nominated for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award, and no surprise with all he does for his community and for his hometown of Galveston, Texas, through the Mike Evans Family Foundation, and that includes donations to the Ball High basketball team, which he played on. He had helped them come here, play a tournament, and they are in the stands, as you can see today. His coach, who he played for on hand as well. Just a tremendous athlete, but also a tremendous person. Really the real deal. He's done so much for Galveston. So cool to see his high school being honored and represented here today as McKenzie gets the first down coming out of the backfield. Yeah, you see Carlton Davis there back on the field for the Bucks. They checked to see if there was any kind of head injury went through the protocols on the sideline he checked out fine he's back in yeah. the injuries they've had this year and that's secondary I mean, Bruce Arians Todd Bowles to be able to do what they've done on defense it's truly remarkable I mean, they've been just decimated they just kept coming and coming and all of a sudden you look up and you're like no I'm not we just fine. first down another blitz and it's white Devin White jumps right on top of Josh Allen. He got past Matt Breida. Yeah, there's one of the best blitzing linebackers in the league, and he does a great job. These running backs, when they come in, they really don't have much of a chance. I mean, he literally, Jim, as you see, 22, Breida just late there, the speed of White, but he hits the quarterback like 30% of the time when he blitzes, which is like, it should be like 6% or 2%. He's got a sack and a half today. That's three sacks overall by the Buccaneers. And you see all the different guys blitzing. And it just creates confusion. Second and 17. And again, Josh Allen is just under pressure. Every drop back. This time Barrett was applying the heat. Now you got a stunt here. Sue's going to go outside. He's going to come inside. And they're supposed to pass it off. And Darrell Williams is just too late. And each one of these plays just makes things more difficult for Josh Allen on the road. Cinco. One guy's getting time. The other one's not today. We're out there. Big difference. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. Third and 17. to Knox trying to get past one defender but unable to Winfield held his ground six yard pickup another pressure got to throw into it because they're going to break you down and they kind of rally and tackle and they've been doing that that's protecting the secondary and these guys keep getting healthier for Tampa I mean Jim if you have to go through Tampa come down here in the plus if they're the one seed it's going to be really difficult for anyone. I mean, the, the one seed this year is huge. On both sides, both conferences. Yes. Right now they're in the mix with Arizona on top, Green Bay, and Tampa Bay. I mean, to me, it's big every year, but when you have quarterbacks who literally can get to the right play all the time, that just makes it twice as difficult to go into their stadium and win. Well, here's a guy with uh, split allegiances as far as teams, but one player, solid. It's usually like First our parents that do that for their two yes. sons, right? right. And they go into a game, it's like, okay, I love you both the same. First down. Brady finds Gronkowski. Milano calls on some fellow defenders to help end it at about the 45 pick up a 16 Brock now three for 43 Brady's pocket presence here just you know nothing's underrated about him but one of the great attributes the ability to sense where people are around him and slide and reset the pocket and then find the check down that's a scored on the last three drives is Fournette Runs into a wall, loses a yard. We were talking about the top of the NFC standings as far as the playoff picture. There's Arizona at one, Green Bay two. Again, conference record could be in the end a tiebreaker 
right now, conference record, Arizona and Green Bay have two losses. Tampa Bay has three in conference play if it comes down to that in the end. So if you pictured all of them at 13 and four, right? Yeah. Then all of a sudden it would that's be. That's the tiebreaker. That's the tiebreaker. And right now, Arizona said is up. Well, they have, they and Green Bay both. Two. two. Here is Godwin. Because Green Bay has the head to head over Arizona. Godwin feasting again. Frankowski threw a block for him. Gain of 13. Well, you see the off coverage there? That just means Tom Brady goes, hey, you got it. Let's go with 14, 14. What's that? Well, it means wide receiver screen to number 14. Yeah. And so he just looks out there and sees. Now they're pressed, right? Now you can't throw them unless, oh, now they bailed off. He could. He's not going to do it back to back plays, but that's what he's looking for in these. There's a pass away from the defenders. It's something that Godwin can feel for another catch. His seventh as we approach the two minute warning. He targets Godwin a lot. We'll see on third down in the red zone. Great catch there. Brady, two completions away from the grand slam of quarterback stacks, if you will, as Fournette takes it inside the 30. He's already got the mark for wins, yards, and touchdowns. The completion record's going to fall maybe before the end of the half. They'll have them all. Or you can ask me. I mean, Brady has 35 after the one. Evans earlier in this quarter. <laughs> Verizon halftime report is coming up. JB, Phil, Nate Boomer, Coach Cowell. Scores and highlights and recaps of the early games, the latest on the afternoon set. Here we go. Two minutes. Just inside of it to go. Bucks driving. Yet again. For that. Time to hurdle. And Johnson had hold of him by the ankle, and they hold him to a gain of about one. Hey, Surrey, is uh, <laughs> no. Tom going to throw a touchdown here? Well, if he did, again, it'd be 700. Wouldn't it be fitting if it ended up going to Gronk? It would be fitting. They've only connected 90 times all time. Timeout called by Buffalo. Timeout, Bills. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Back with 151 to go in the half. That's a second and eight coming up from the 28. 272 yards of offense by the Bucks. We need team. We need team. 49. We need team. Just... It's Gronk. And that's Edmonds able to tackle him alone, which is a rarity in this league. Yeah, this is sound defense right here. Johnson takes the outside leverage, forcing him back inside. Edmonds comes flying in. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Timeout Buffalo after this from Progressive Insurance. So the Bills, who will receive the third quarter kick, have used a couple of timeouts here trying to see if they get a chance to have the football in the closing seconds, minute and a half of the first half. Got a third and three here for the Bucks. Bernard is the running back. Blitzing. Brady has to launch it. And Evans catches it. Oh, how about man. that pass play? Down to the two. I don't think you want to know how early Tom Brady threw this ball. He's got the completion record career with that one. Look at the feet they're in. He's got the completion record. There it is. Goes for 20 yards. Now his 18th completion in 23 attempts. Now most all time. <laughs> well, you good? You're gonna see that Holds them all. Bit. That was crazy. Red Danny, Red Danny, Red Danny, Red Danny. Red Danny, Red Danny. That's the will. That's the mic, that's the will. Here comes something fancy right here. Hand up the middle, Jeff. And that's Fournette. It's going to be inches short. And the Bills take a timeout. They're last. And again, we're back in 30 seconds after this. They're about a foot away, second and goal. Now, maybe two feet. They mark it 
closer to the one. Wells comes in as an extra lineman. The sneak. And the touchdown. Oh, whoa. The second time on a sneak. There's been a scuffle after. Well, you knew Buffalo was coming in with a little chip on their shoulder. Right now, Tampa's just out-executed. Won the line of scrimmage. They've blitzed and created a lot of pressure. Brady's handled his side. But this is why I think home field advantage matters so much. Because he's able to get to the right play. But watch this at the end here. I think you're going to see the chippiness right there. Tom's getting upset because sometimes you get that late shot on somebody down in there that no one sees. Right there. And one more, too. Just a little shove at the end. But he's got a touchdown, and he's done some things by running the football in this game today. Yeah. Well, right down inside there, they try and knock the ball out, right, with their fist and everything. And sometimes they catch you a little too low. If you miss. But sometimes it can be a swing and a miss. Suck up. I say he's running the football. That goes as a first down and a touchdown. That's four first downs. The rush touchdown for Brady, his second of the season. And the lead now swells to 21. Well, they're the highest scoring team in the league at 31 points a game. They already got 24 here in the first half. This is against the defense. Has done a lot of amazing things this year, and they've had no answers for him today. 299 yards posted by Tampa Bay in this first half. Jim, we've done this is our third game at Tampa this year, and everyone has kind of gone this exact way down here. Well, you know what? Actually, if you want to say this year, we'll go back to February 7th. This is the fourth game, and they've all been blowout wins. Kansas City. Well, here's part of the reason why you have a guy who could throw a ball before anyone looks under extreme pressure and float it with perfect trajectory so he could literally see an angle and a possibility. Oh, Jackson Smith, our guy here. Well, he stood in there and took the hit. Look at this, this is how it looked from his angle. And with a nice bag. Right there. Jackson, Single. gonna get a little treatment, he'll be back. Well all done to stay in and take the hit with you said. Yeah, okay. We were in Kansas City, Miami, and Chicago. Now Buffalo and the Bills get it to Beasley. Picks up 11. They have no timeouts. They tried to do just this. Take those timeouts on defense to be given the chance to put something up other than just a field goal before the intermission. And I love this. Flags out. Might be offside against yes. the Bucks. Yeah, it will be. It'll be offside. But this is a monster drive. Buffalo gets the ball. This is not... It feels like it's crazy. Defense number 58. Five yard penalty. First down. Verizon halftime reports coming up. JB, Phil, Nate Boomer, Coach Cower, all the scores and highlights. San Francisco Cincy, what's going on in that game? 49ers leading in the last minute of the first half of that one. All that coming up. Verizon halftime report. This drive right here, I mean, if you go down and score a touchdown, 24 to 10, you get yeah, the ball right, back. Right. Yeah. Technically, you could still be fine. It just this becomes an enormous point in the game right here. Off the first penalty of the game against Tampa Bay, Allen able to unload it. Was that picked? Right off the ground. It is an interception, and it's Richard Sherman in his return game with his 37th career pick. That's the most for an active player in the league, Richard Sherman. Well, I think from up here it looked like it's going to stand. Let's see, though, because it was hard to tell. That's an interception, Jim. Hands are under it. Sherman, one of the great ball hawking corners in the league, but it really starts up front. Brown is having a really tough day. And Barrett has really made life miserable for Josh Allen today. And wow, Buffalo has not gotten overwhelmed like this in quite some time. Their losses have been close losses. Mm -hmm. Well, they're good. They're a really good, well-coached football team. There. But this is a different animal, Tampa, right? It's the, the Super Bowl chance for a reason, and they've gotten better. They know the system. It's why Brady can throw that ball to a guy, because now he's worked with him so long, he can sense where he's going to go keep. 10 steps before he does it. 49. We need keep. We get O.J. Howard in the game for Tampa Bay. Brady. 
felt the pressure and took the incompletion. Well, as they were racing toward the goal line and that pass that he lofted amazingly to Evans, this is what we were talking about, the career grand slam. And he said, of course, to us, the one thing he cares about is that first one, wins. Yeah. What it's all about, period. Well, he plays the game. And, uh, I think he's decent what? at wins, too. You know, yeah. 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 Got a few. He's for now. Do you ever think he's seen anybody get the grand slam? No, I mean, he's uh, he's obviously gone to a different sport. He's already won him in football. So maybe Tiger, Jack Nicholas, oh. they're in there. Hogan, Sarah's in player, you know, already become the sixth. That joke will only work for about 4% <laughs> of the people out there. So sorry to the other 96%. <laughs> but when you're hitting balls, you're, you're dreaming the same thing. <laughs> so, third and five will be coming up. To, to me, those two plays you just watched is a microcosm a different way. The Bills get good pressure on first down, and he throws it away. Bruce Arians has done a phenomenal job getting this team, but he throws the ball away, right, on first down, doesn't get a sack, doesn't make it a MySpace. They blitz him on second down. He just gets the ball out right to where the pressure's coming. He sees it coming. Now it's third and five. So if they go ahead and score on this drive at all or get a first down, no one ever remembers to throw away on first down instead of taking the sack just because he could feel and sense and that was the right decision in the right play at the right time. Alert, alert. And he's back with Bernard. Alert. Hawaii. Hawaii. You're up 58. Directing traffic before the snap. Here they come. Incomplete. And Brady threw this one just a touch early. This is actually going to be on him because he had him open. Godwin was just... Starting to change direction. That might be the only throw that I think Brady. Got Giovanni Bernard, who Tom was very excited about signing in the offseason to be a, an option in the pass game. He's caught 22 balls on yeah. the season. He's been a nice addition. Good job Bruce Arians has done, you know, wow. last year making this team. I mean, he talked about member thinking this would be the year of the Super Bowl. It, it, it just, you know, last year he didn't think that maybe with Grunk getting back acclimated, Fournette coming um, late. First season, this was be, no yeah. off season. You're right. We'll be right back. Bernard, slow to get up. Donovan Smith comes over to lend a little support. This is a guy that Brady will want to have for sure come the postseason. He's really high on him getting acclimated. And you were saying this as we're going to the break, how Bruce Arians told us in our meeting this week that this was supposed to be the year. And, you know, building a defense, getting everybody kind of adjusted to one another. And lo and behold, they win that Super Bowl the first year together, this whole group. And he, he talked about he knows how hard it was to go on the road and do that. Right, that's just a rare thing. It happens every once in a blue moon, but it, it happened, and they've just improved and gotten better, and that's a testament to him, you know, keeping these guys in. Because sometimes when you have some success, some teams, you know, take a break. They haven't. And really well done. Pinion with his second punt. His first one's 55 yards. Of course, trying to knock this one somewhere close to the 10, but it went out of bounds a little early. Actually, just to the 20, so just a 20 yard exchange, and they'll have to take Bernard to the locker room on the card. So, Josh Allen, 40 seconds, no timeouts. How about they've not had a running back carry the football? It's been 30 years since a team did not have a rush by a running back in the first half of a game. The only rushes have been by Josh Allen. Three carries, three running plays for 21 yards. They get a fourth carry. But to me, though, these are rushes, Jim. <laughs> yeah, but without a running back touching the football yeah. in the running game, it hasn't happened in the league in a game in 30 years. That is crazy. What a great job here, though. Another design run. You think it's going to be a pass, right? Because it's an empty formation after the motion. 
But really the key, they're 0 for 4 on third down. They haven't been able to extend any drives. The other team's keeping the ball, going down the field, scoring. And that's just been, you know, too many sacks. This is, a, this is once again, they're still in a position to get points here. Yeah, that 22-yard run actually gave a chance to do yes. something. I got it, I got it. It's the fourth play for the Bills that went over 20 yards in this game. But no timeouts. And here they come. Looking down and Diggs was all turned around. Didn't know where it was. Well, he held him on the play. That got away. You'll see Davis. I think he grabbed his back when I was watching down there. Watch him hold that jersey right there. You see the bottom? That usually, you tuck the jersey, it's automatic normally. Yeah. Sometimes it's like a perfect angle where, like, Somebody who's looking in that can't see Just it. Just didn't got blocked. But that was a miss right there. That, that would have helped Buffalo. Now with 28 seconds. By 20, was that it? Hey, Lion, Lion. Oh, the horse up. Here they blitz again. It's Davis coming after him. Oh, this moment throws it away. How many times are they blitz in this game? Do you think that was a late hit? Up here, I mean, I was looking down the field. It looked like they keep blitzing him and catching him right there, but he gets out of it. But the receivers aren't running around right there. He went down hard, but I don't think he pushed him really enough. I think he just kind of fell. He spent some time on the tarp the last two plays. Well, the pressure package right now, this first half, has been outstanding by Todd Bowles. He's consistently confused, you know, this this offensive system right now and. He's confused the offensive lineman. He's gotten Josh Allen once or twice. It's just the receiver didn't look once. Here, Paul was across quickly. There's a lot of calls here. Delay game, offsides. Which one are they going with? Prior to any fouls at the line of scrimmage, delay game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Jumps off sides, but they're saying the clock got to zero right before that, which is smart by picking the ball, right? If it's going to go one, zero, he should just go. He was timing it. Third and 15, 21 seconds. Rushing only three. Fourth coming up, it's White. Gets it away, but out of bounds. That was Diggs. That was a rocket. And now they'll bring out Hawk. Well, a very disappointing first half for Bills fans. What an unbelievable half for Tampa Bay. And this is not the other teams we're here for, right? This is not going against Chicago or the Dolphins, who at that time were not playing very well. This is against a team who actually has steamrolled seven of their opponents, and they've lost five. I get it. But this is a team last year that was dominant. They're good. Impressive what Tampa Bay just did in this half. Over 300 yards of offense in the half. Hawks going to have a nice punt here to put on the ledger. With one second to go, 61 yards. And Todd Bowles telling us this week his team is defined by its grit and toughness. We've seen that. You look at what he does as far as the scheme and some of the influences in his career. Mike Nolan, Mike Zimmer, Coach Fazio. Chuck Pagano. I think he's the next head coach right there you should be looking for. Todd Bowles already been it, but he's, I thought he did a really good job, you know, when he was with the Jets. And now I think you're looking at a guy who's very prepared, very well, like he just does a great job with his communication and his scheme is difficult to deal with. He's going to be successful wherever he's at. He's going to get a job, I think, next year. You know, sometimes it's difficult after you just had one, you know, for teams to get, but it's, you gotta understand, he's, he's too good, honestly. Sometimes that second go-around, too, yeah. is a big different story. Yeah, a guy named Bill Belichick had a second go-around, didn't he? That worked out all right. Yeah. Bruce Arians, Todd Bowles, Tom Brady, 
The Buccaneers dominant in the first half. Fifth straight home game leading by at least 20. How about that? 24 3. Halftime is next after these first half highlights from Verizon and a word from your local station. Four to three, Tampa Bay at halftime. Bills about to receive the second half kick. This season, Crown Royal is supporting the small places that make game day big. Join us to unlock your support at kickoffwithcrown.com. The Bills, Tony, the only team in the league that had not allowed, has not allowed, 400 yards by an opponent all season long in any game. They gave up 303 yards in the first half. I think that's going away. I think that, away. Uh, it's just been really impressive with what Tampa Bay has done. I mean, they've imposed their will, but not just with the blitzes. It's like the, the stunts up front. They've called a perfect game on defense, and offensively, they've been so efficient. I mean, this is why I really believe this year it's going to be so difficult to go through Tampa Bay with the way they can play at home because their blitzes are hard to see, and Tom Brady's unbelievable, you know, having the pencil out in the last swipe at it. He's going to get to the right play. Yeah, so can't stop them. Meantime, they can't stop the blitz and the pass rush. Under siege, as you heard Coach Power say, clearly the more physical team is Tampa Bay, as you heard Phil say from the studio. And let's go to Tracy. What did you hear at halftime, Trace? Well, Sean McDermott just struggling for the right words, very emotional in terms of trying to describe that first half as they were getting beat at the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. He said offensively they will change some things up, but Josh Allen needs to get the ball out quickly. He said defensively they are just playing into Brady's hands. They need to win on the early downs and get some pressure on him. And then a few injury notes, Emmanuel Sanders out for the game with a knee injury. Gio Bernard and Jamel Dean, who's dealing with an illness, they are both out as well. But Bernard has a hip injury, Jim. Okay, here's Allen on first down. Thank you, Tracy. Goes to Davis. We will see more snaps now with Sanders done for the game. And here's the quarterback look. That late first half pick thrown by Allen, who just never had time to breathe in that first half. Meanwhile, Brady throws for a score, runs for another. And part of that is getting the ball out quick. Sean McDermott, Tracy just told us right there, it's a great job because that's what I believe is the only way they can come back here. The pressure has been too much. Even when they don't blitz, it's been too much. It's overwhelmed this offensive line. So your plays need to call plays that actually are, oh, they're blitzing on every play. I'll give you a chance. Again, it's a peak. And it goes for just a yard for Allen, running in the arms of Levante David. Well, you know, it's the number one rush defense. Yeah, they were a yard behind the Ravens on the season. That's all coming in, but had been the last two years. And again, you go that first half, the running back position never carried the football. I don't mind not doing it on first down, right? Because you know they're playing for that. But on second and third, you got to sprinkle it in just so that way the pressure is not extreme. There's a catch by Diggs. He tried to dive under the tackle of Adams. Diggs, by the way, earlier in this game became the third player all time with 200 receptions in the first two seasons with a new team. Yeah, I want to get, I know they target Diggs. I, I really think when they're at their best, if you pressure, you get the ball out quickly to Diggs or to Beasley. Just throw it to them right away. And if a team's not pressuring you, that's when you can actually do all the rest of the stuff in that first half. But all these guys that have been here, Jim, when they're all up on that line, it's like you got to figure out what you're going to do right away. Here they come again. Got it away quickly. And look at that. Tackle by Murphy Bunting on Davis. Tried a little pick route. Unsuccessful right there. At least they had a couple of good plays coming out of the half, but can't waste these opportunities and drives right there. I, I'd be tempted to go for this right now. No, no, they, there was a hesitation before that punting unit was brought out. But it's fourth and three, and McDermott brings out the punting team. It'll be the fifth punt for Hawk already. Oh, no, it's a fake. They go with the fake. And it's Breeder tripped up and stopped. 
That was Patrick O'Connor, who was not fooled. Well, this is one of those positions on the field as a defense. You're saying safe defense, so you don't rush everyone. And you see 79 with an incredible effort to get Connor with the play. So you're Tom Brady, you got the big lead, you got a short field for your first drive of the second half. There's Fournette. Plows ahead to the 39. So the fake punt didn't fool him. And Matt Breida, oddly enough, the first official rush by a running back was that one. Was the fake punt. <laughs> Good one, though. <laughs> You're talking about Brady here in the second half. They're going to stick with what they do. You see how they just got up on the ball again? It's not going to be, they're not one of those teams. And Tom's not one of the quarterbacks. He's like, okay, now we got to just do nothing but beat clock. And that was one of the worst throws I've seen Brady make. Try to go back to Gronkowski. It's almost like the ball slipped out of his hands because he's wide open. Of course, Gronkowski grew up in the Buffalo area. Great interview with uh, Boomer on the NFL today. Getting some more background on those days when he was living in Buffalo and living and dying with the Bills as a young lad and pretending out in the yard with the family, always playing the role of Eric Moulds. He outgrew Moulds' position a little bit. Yeah. I think they're playing the role of the kids now, Rob Gronkowski. Third and eight. They go to Brait now, Cameron Brait. Found two yards short of the first where they'll spot it. Pick up a seven. And they'll go for it. They're going to bring Gronkowski back into the huddle. This is not a short one right here, right? This is really got a tight end in the backfield. I think it's great back there, right, Jim? Yep. Now in motion, you see Manor zone. Ooh, zone. Come up the middle, throw it right away. Oh, bounced up into the air. And it's still tipped and almost able to get to it in time was Micah Hyde incomplete. Well, this ball's tipped by Edmonds, who's blitzing and saves. There's a flag Maybe in the secondary the here, oh. Tony. Well, the ball's tipped, so you can't really have a flag, right, Jim, if you pass and fear someone, which they probably called. But there shouldn't be because the ball's tipped. After the pass was incomplete, personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the defense number 91. It's a 15 yard penalty. It'll be a first down for Buffalo. Timeout on the field. Well, that means there's a fight in between these two and. We're going to find out. I think he tackled him, Jim. There is a penalty. It will be, though, after the play. It will be Buffalo football when we come back. Bills take over at the 19. Here's a carry by Singletary. Look at this run. All the way out to the 48. Well, this is why running the ball is good. They've used this pressure multiple times today. Two guys off the edge. Pause that right there. Boom, off the edge. They come off, and you see this hole. He's going to go up and cut back. But because they pressured off the edge there, Jim, you're able to just send him by. He can't come in and fit a gap. Great start for Buffalo. And how about if that interception? Corey would have made it. He would have been called back. Called back. Mitch Morris with a great block on that last play. Here's Diggs. Able to get it down to the Tampa Bay 39. It's Ed Oliver taking on Ryan Jensen. Right down there. So watch. Ed picks up Jensen and tries to, what do we call it? Double leg takedown. Yeah, it's a wrestling move. Penton. Got a friend named Andy. He was big into wrestling. So they actually hey, doing Linda, great Linda, Linda. Two good plays by the Bills to start this drive. From their 19 to the 39 of Tampa. And Allen seeing Devin White coming after him again. 
Just throws it incomplete. I like the Bills. I mean, this is starting to make me think they're having a chance. That's a screen, and it's a good job throwing it in the dirt because really Tampa Bay was just prepared for it, and one guy wasn't fooled. But they're trying to get the ball out quick now. They ran the ball against a pressure like, you know, you can be prepared for it since they've run it four or five times. Good start to the half. Change the play, cross dog. Here he comes. Here he goes. Second and ten. Just a little out of reach for Beasley. When you've been pressured as much as Josh Allen has today, Tony, how much after a while does it just change the way that you feel a flow as a quarterback? Well, it definitely affects you. And this is where systems matter so much. On the road, it's very difficult to change a lot of plays. Change the offensive line, their technique, who to block, change the receivers, their routes. But when you're at home, you can just literally say, hey, five down, 52 over here. Hey, guys over there, X, boom, boom. Set up. On the road, you got to go out and tell these guys. Look at one guy. The communication is much more difficult. Third and ten. Trying to pick up their first third down conversion, and they do. And this is what I say. If they pressure, throw the ball to Beasley. Oh, they didn't. They, they, they marked him short. Him. Oh, he easily had that, didn't he? I thought he did. Now, this one, uh, I would challenge this one if it's not a first. But good job getting the ball out quick, right? Wow, that's a hit right there. Let's see where you think he's down. I would challenge this if it were me. No. Ooh. Yeah, I, 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 don't know. I, I think you might have a case. It's really close. Fourth down. So they're now 0 for 7 on third down. Oh, shotgun. Fourth and a yard. I'll give it to him. QB powered. He's going to run right. Allen has it. He has. I tell you, he's taken some hits today. The sacks, half the passes that he got hit after releasing it, the times he's run the football. Watch 79, Jim, right here. You just called it. 79 is going to pancake. Devin White right there. Spencer Brown. Good job. Hadn't been great in protection tonight, but you see, put White on the ground. Yes, but he's run. You can see why teams have to prepare for this, you know. Six for 47, rushing for Allen. Who on first down tries to go with the screen and knocks. Has three Buccaneer defenders on him, including Devin White. Uh, White and David, the linebackers, sniff out screens all the time. Just great instincts. It does get harder and harder to, to keep blitzing when teams are getting rid of the ball quick and they're throwing screens. Even if they're not successful, it does make it more difficult. We'll see if Todd Bowles continues the onslaught but he starts to drop people. Second and 12. Here's another screen, Tony. Single Terry. And he's going to be marked. Let's see. Right at about the 18. Gain of nine. And a third and three on the way. Well, if you're Buffalo, you, as a fan, you got a little sign of life right here. You're just starting to feel a little momentum. Third down conversions today, 0 for 7. But they did get the fourth down. Allen keeps it again. It's, there's room there. Allen to the end zone. And Buffalo has his first touchdown. Well, you see just the emotion of Allen right there. Nothing went right in the first half. He needed to get the ball a little quicker. The play calling needed to change a little bit. And Allen comes right out. Really, on the first drive, they did well. Just didn't get the first down. Had to punt and didn't get it on the punt, punt fake. But all of a sudden here, this drive, Josh Allen makes every right decision. Got the ball out fast. Oh, this is not over. Now this drive becomes big the other way. Here's Bass for the extra point. That's a 66-yard drive in nine plays. And the kick is good. Halfway through the third quarter. And the Bills post a touchdown. Josh Allen picked up a big fourth down. And then gets the touchdown. Welcome back to Raymond James Stadium. Here in Tampa, Josh Allen from 18 yards out. His 29th career. 
rush touchdown. It came on the third down counts as a conversion in the stats. So the first third down conversion is their first touchdown. I mean, they are calling runs, right? Their quarterback runs. And we talk about the halfback, but it's like they've ran the ball eight times, nine times now. Mm -hmm. And seven of the quarter. It's not like these runs by the quarterback are dropbacks. They're calling design, so it's like they are running. But that one run really made a difference. That was a drive starter. Yeah. 29 yards by Singletary. And that's what's going to change Tampa's defense very quickly. Here's a look at next gen stats powered by AWS. Well, you see that high pointed ball? No one throws that. We talked about that earlier, Sergeant. But that right there is why Mike Evans. I mean, the height size. This is when you go into a game like this. Evans is six foot, what, four or five? Rob Gronkowski, six foot five. Cameron Brait, six foot five. And then you look over there the other side, and they're all five foot 11. Five foot 11 or less. And it's like, just some of these balls can throw them up and have them high point it. That's an advantage. All time touchdown maker in Tampa Bay history. Recently moving past Mike Allstock. As Jones gets the rush for nine yards. When you talk about trying to defend this offense, and you just got the impression talking to Tom last night on the phone in our production meeting, they just they realize that they're harder to defend. Red zone plays, third down plays, hurry up. The system's in sync. It's the nuance that one's able to go to. As Jones is near that first, I believe he's got it. So the biggest thing is, you know, let's see if I can get this right here. They're doing trigonometry when everyone else is doing. Uh, what do you want to say? Uh, minus and plus, tables. Plus, <laughs> simple addition. Algorithms? There it is. Well, okay, gotcha. He's algorithm. <laughs> but what is really happening, honestly, is that he is allowing everyone on that Ready? offense now, having been here for continuity. Run! They run it again, third straight play. The, the continuity of this, Jim, it allows them to know what Tom is thinking, so that when he gets to stuff, the communication is so much faster. So the big thing is when they go on the road, they're able to still do the same stuff they do at home through eyes, just a, a simple, like, touching of his helmet, right? It's a simple, like, oh, you remember this? So once you go through it enough times, everyone's seeing the field, and they can go to the next level, the next level, the next level, so they're not just stuck with the play they called in. He's always getting to the right play, which is the right looks, and that's where everyone else has to be able to go with him when he changes it. It's a second and 12. That's Addison jumping. And it's going to be against Buffalo. Offside, defense, number 97, unimpeded to the quarterback. Five yard penalty, second down. This is a defense that Coach Frazier squad, second in the league in takeaways, coming in second to the Colts. They haven't had one. They've nearly had one on the first play of the game when the snap sailed wide. And then the tip ball earlier in this quarter. I mean, both these defenses are in the top four or five in the league in turnovers. That's why. Second and seven going deep. Brock almost reeled it in. Boyer was there to help make it even more difficult. And this is why it's hard to throw the ball. And they don't give up a lot of big plays. This Buffalo defense has outstanding safeties. And you see Poyer's in great position. Just the size is different. What a throw. And almost an incredible catch. He almost like, David Tyreed it. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Look at this. But you see, like, that, that's covered. Only Tom, maybe a couple other quarterbacks, and Rob could actually have that. The size matters. But Buffalo has a chance to get this back right here. Can that be a verb? What's a verb, Tyreed? <laughs> Third and seven. Diving attempt falls incomplete for Godwin. There's two uncharacteristic throws by Brady in this half. Let's see, the ball's going to come right in over that middle of the field. And I think he's wide open right there. And that ball just kind of tailed on him. And came off and I still think he might have 
been able to make that catch. Pinion. End over in. Stevenson dropped way back. Nowhere near it. Ball settles down at the 23 after traveling 39 yards. Diggs and Allen, can they establish another drive against Brady and company? Can they play the role of the Grinch here on the road? Got Brown to make up. 45, 45. Back with the Bills. Last time they had it, they drove for a touchdown. Defense just made quick work of it. Here's Brita to the 28. This game marks for our crew. What does the time go? Our 100th broadcast together since opening up in Nashville in September of 2017. It's been it's gone a by whole quick. lot of fun. Going by quick. Unbelievable crew to work with, too. Proud to be a part of it with you. Proud to be and a part of it. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, at CBS. 100. It's been like a family here. We've enjoyed the heck out of it. Amazing time. Second and six. Sprita again. He's got a running lane, and he's got a first down at the 40. By the way, we thought this 100th game would be a battle, and it's hadn't been up until right now. They're getting the run game going. But a lot of the reason the run game gets going is when you can calm down the other stuff and have them defend both things. And a short passing game is always important against teams who blitz. It allows them to stop. We're going to find out right now. Is he going to come on the edge and start coming again? Here they come as Allen takes off. Once he got past the blitzer, he's got another five. He's up to 71 yards rushing. Well, he's up to 71 with some great design plays. And you see not a lot of teams other than Baltimore run these quarterback runs that are literally like it's you're running the football. It's not like fake the handoff, possibly throw it. But Josh Allen reads it correctly, sees it, and a couple of cool plays right there. Second and five. Ball tipped and complete. That was Bayo got a hand on it. Since Tampa Bay went up 24 to 3, the total yards are 101 to 10. Bills. Yeah, the third down coming up. And you're coming. You can already tell the difference, Tampa, right? That last one was a run pressure, but two of the first three plays had no pressure on it. And Josh having been hitting people around him all day, just a little bit too quick to get through stuff there. He had a little more time. But I can't imagine that Todd Bowles isn't coming after him right here. I mean, to me, you got to figure out something down at the bottom of your screen and get it out quickly. And out quickly to Singletary. Needs to try to get past David, and he cannot. Great tackle by Levante. That was what do you do now? Fourth down, looks like they may go for it. Huh? Uh, yes, I'm going for it. I mean, the possessions are getting shorter and shorter in this game, and Tom Brady's not. At some point, he's going to actually take his team down and get a field goal, probably, and nothing else. So you look at that really quickly, and you're like, we at least need three possessions. We can't just go ahead and hope we get four. Oh, at the last minute, they're going to bring out. Of course they're not going to. Oh, I don't like this. And you can't now fake it because you just did it. <laughs> you know, you can't do the same thing again. Uh, this is how you should have done it last time, though. You're going to go for it, and then you run them on, and then you fake it really quickly. And now the fifth punt for Hawk. Fair catch signal. Made it the 10. Now you're asking a lot for your defense now to keep your offense in the game. They've given you two stops already in this half. Wednesday, the season finale is here. You can find out who will be the sole survivor and win the million-dollar prize. And then after the big reveal, take a deep dive into the season on the Survivor After Show, immediately following the Survivor finale. That's Wednesday, 8, 7 Central on CBS. You're right. How many times can you ask this defense to continue to keep Brady and company on the field for just a short amount of time. I mean, I, it's one thing because they pin them down. So it's like if they can get like give up obviously three and out or just one first down, you can make the argument for the season. But if they keep this you know, for five, six minutes, it's just that there's not enough possessions as it gets lower and lower in the game, especially against a quarterback who's very efficient on third down.
That's Fournette with the carries now over 100 scrimmage yards in the game, including the 47 yard touchdown to put up the game's first touchdown. Taking their time with it. Well, when you're in your own end zone, that's not the time because you really got to protect everyone. Right? Like, this is where it gets. You know, you're not going to get spread out and do all the stuff. You got to be able to show run or pass. Second and eight. Caught Evans. First down all the way out to the 35. So they get out of that jam back near the 10 yard line. That picks up 24. This is where Brady missed. Remember earlier? Well, not this time. Perfect strike. He's not going to miss that many. He got off the field because he missed on a throw to a guy who was open last time. And that happens in football, but that's not going to happen a lot to number 12. First and 10. And nothing there that time. In the last minute of the third quarter. And the one thing you did say as we were prepping all week was how important and how different it's going to be for home field in the playoffs this year versus this past season. The fans in the stands. Yeah. Full stadiums make it much more difficult because of the communication. That's why you can't get to a bunch of plays. If you're at home, you can literally just change them with one word on the road. People can't hear you. Second and ten. Hanging out, waiting for it. That's Johnson. And he's up to about the 40. Where it'll be a third and six to start the fourth quarter. Only scoring in the third, the touchdown run by Josh Allen. It's 24 10, heading to the fourth. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Hey, while we have a moment, all of us at CBS Sports sent along. Our very best wishes to a great friend, colleague over at the NFL, Howard Katz. Been under the weather. We wish you, Howard, a speedy recovery. Wish you were here for the game today, but we look forward to seeing you on the road soon. All the best wishes to you. Third and six, starting the fourth. They seal the pocket for him. Brady's pass. He did get pressure at the last moment. And maybe, in fact, it was too late. Milano was low. Well, this is going to be, I thought I saw pass interference on 30. Yeah, there is a second flag in the secondary. Just see that? down there. Yep. I see one at the 50. There are fouls against both teams on the play. Ooh. Prior to the pass, holding defense number 30. Holding offense number 66. Penalties offset. Third down. So it'll be third and six again. Here's Milano coming in. That's what people were thinking about a low hit. I think it's probably the right call. Can't get thrown into him. Yeah, he's kind of pushed into him. You should hold your breath a little bit anytime you see a quarterback yeah. contact come. Actually, in that position. Well, that's how Brady went down in 08. In 08. Eight. Eight. Game one. Third and six. Pressure. Pass. Caught. Evans. Evans on third down. Almost every time he catches it, it's a first down on third down. You know, just these plays. Watch. Go ahead and roll this and pause it right now. This is where Brady reads this. He goes one to two to three to four and he just reads across the field so quickly that he gets all the way back to four and it's just everyone's moving in a direction see the eyeballs one two three four and it all looked like it happened in like one second and that's why he's unbelievably difficult to defend that's snappy decision making first and ten for net Rides the wave down inside the 35 yep coming into the week Evans every third down catch he had made on the season had gone for a first down just as it did there. Evans having a big day of it. Five for 80 and a touchdown. Such a weapon. You can see a guy with that size being able to go inside and run the inside dig route. And then outside, you saw the corner. He made the incredible catch in the end zone. 
and he's gotten he's the guy I really see the nuances really come on. I mean he's just dynamic in this offense now. I mean obviously all of them are but it's just difficult to defend. And that touchdown catch was on the third down as well. Second and three. Quinnett had to go wide with it. Bought himself some time and some room. And he's down to the 15 yard line. Rock threw a block for him. Burnett waited for that to develop, and they actually mark it out of bounds at the 14, gain of 21. Watch 74, the pulling tackle right there. What a job. Ali Marpet. Oh. He goes, first he blocks someone before that, then he goes all the way out and finishes it on Jackson, but that's where this whole line, they don't run the ball a ton, but they're so successful when they do because they're really good and talented. I mean, the conglomeration, we can't keep talking about it. It's just really tough to do. We got 49! First down at the 14. To Godwin. Contact right away. Taron Johnson. Might have shoved him back a yard or two. In this offensive line, Marpet, the guard, right there, not tackled on the previous play. Having an outstanding year. Gents in the center is unbelievable. Worse, 78. I mean, you know, across the board, Donovan Smith, but. Now that offensive line, Tony, has been intact for 11 of the 12 games coming in. They've had consistency, and they've been able to stay away from the injuries mm -hmm. and That's... protect their quarterback, who does get rid of it in a hurry, but only 14 sacks on the season. Here's the jump pass. Almost intercepted. Would have been huge. Dane Jackson. Uh, that was. Oh my goodness, that gets Buffalo back in the game yep. instantly. Brady throws off his back foot, and Jackson has this right here. How come he didn't finish? Oh, it's a tough catch. It's a great play by him, really, did he swallowed up Brady. He wasn't open, and then on top of it. Can't blame him for dropping something like that because it's yeah. so difficult. Remember, this is a secondary that recently lost Tredavious White, just a great player with the ACL. He did not allow a touchdown pass. 68 targets against him all year. Third and ten. Godwin races to about the five. Will it be fourth on a long one? They got to kick the field goal here. This might be the only team who's just like, nah, we're going to go ahead and go for it. But you should kick the field goal. They right? put you up three scores. I mean, they're going. They're showing signs of going for it. That's what I'm saying. It's like they're the only ones. Bruce Arians, just because they just think that they're actually so good, they're yeah. going to be just fine. And they make the other team go to length of field, but you 100% in the fourth quarter should make it a three possession. They started back at their own 10. Now they're at the six at the other end of the field. Maybe try and draw them off sides? Could be. Yeah, Tom's looking around for a timeout. Yeah. So, never with the intent of running that play. I, I honestly think you go up there and you try and draw them off sides quickly, and then you take your timeout, or you can even take a penalty. It's not like five yards matters from the... Six year on for the kicker, but they still look like they're going for they it. They sure do. Byron Leftwich. They shouldn't. Well, here comes Suck there Up. There they go. Yep. Suck Up with one attempt. It was just 23 yards out. He's getting a chance at another short one. Add on another yard for this one 24. And that's it. He got a chance just on the math. Put him up 17 if he makes it with 11.24 to go. Pinion's the holder. And that kick. Chip shot. 27-10. It drove 84 yards in six minutes. Wes Stevenson hoping to get a chance to turn on the afterburners. He had three kick returns for touchdowns in college at Houston. Caught 22 touchdowns. He's only up for the second time this year. He's had a lingering foot injury after being drafted back in the spring in the sixth round. Go back and look at that fourth down. They 
go for it. What do you do? You get a good punt. You were saying, will it be worth it if you I get off the field? Maybe just one first down. I would have gone for it. Well, they kicked down the 45 yards down to the 10, but they kept the football for almost six minutes. That's Drove right. it down to the end of the field. Got a field goal. By the way, yesterday marked the anniversary of Tampa Bay's first ever win, December 11th, 1977. Came against the Saints. They had started 0 and 26 as a franchise. And then that day, back in December of 77, they got their first ever win. Here's Allen. As it has been all day, they're after him. There's Knox. He's got a pickup of about four. Yeah, this is how you talk about the two Tampas. You see Coach McKay, Gary Huff, those early days. Their first two games in franchise history, they got shut out. Their first points ever as a franchise came against Buffalo in the third game on a field goal by Dave Green. Steve Spurrier was the Bucks quarterback that day. There's Diggs. <laughs> but uh, as lean as those days were, they're feasting these days. Those two years, distant memory. All those years, you know, they're just <laughs> now they're just now getting some of those season ticket holders to come yeah. back. <laughs> yeah, obviously they had the dominant defense for that stretch. It was the start probably of the real Tampa, like Ryan and here, right? This is the second since then, maybe. Yep. But you would say that would be the best Tampa team in history before last season. It's obviously their Super Bowl team. The Super Bowl team that. Beat the Raiders in the Super Bowl. Offside, defense number nine. Five yard penalty. First down. Is there any other team, obviously not, didn't win the Super Bowl, is there any other team in mention with those you know, two eras? So that era is the dominant team, the first Super Bowl, and this one is obviously as well. Is there any other time in Tampa history that there's another little era that didn't get yeah, it. There was a little era. They got to an NFC championship game when they ended up losing like an 11 7 crazy score to the St. Louis Rams in the greatest show on turf. Good run right there. It's excellent play call. But yeah, that's, the same, that's the same era I'm saying. Though, because that's the same team. I mean, they have different players, but it's like that was the same coaches and predominant best players. But I think 79. Doug Williams, they made the NFC Championship yeah, it is. game. Yeah, yeah. That is. that's what it is. Okay, Singletary. When he's run the football, he's had a 29-yard run and an 18-yard carry. Averaging 23 and a half yards per rush. How about that? Slice it another way as Allen. Look at him go. Is he getting up? I'm always scared right there at the end because that one looked like it was just enough. Yeah, he's Came uh, up on his But you see, he makes everyone go, gets White and everyone to go, but just that move on 26, just shaking Adams, and then you can see the rest. But right here, oh, that always scares me when your knees go down right like that. But how about the way he switched hands as that ball was close to being knocked out? I would try and take a shot right here, you know, something right, look him off one side. And throw it right back to the other. Look left, by right, look right, go left. Down the middle, and it's a touchdown by Dawson Knox. His eighth touchdown of the season. It came into the week, tied for the most touchdowns by a tight end in the league this year. And the pride of Brentwood Academy in Brentwood, Tennessee, is another touchdown for the Bills. Well, and this is great. He actually looked off the corner on the left, so he didn't look right back left. He looked left and then came back and throws a seam right down the middle to Knox. But it's a perfect call. That's what I said. You take your shot right there. It's first down. They're going to come up. You're on the ball quickly. What a big time drive. It's not over, Jim. You talk about quickly. That is two minutes and 13 seconds down the field, 75 yards to the end zone. So the offense has come to life in the second half. Allen to Knox, and they're back to within 10. Some of the old flashbacks from the 11 prior meetings, seeing some of the old names of the past, like Doug Flutie. Tampa Bay has won seven for the first 11 matchups in their uh, 
taping up the, uh, the Josh Allen ankle. He got uh, injured on that scramble to play before he throws the touchdown strike to Knox. Hit with an opening. It's Darden. Got a flag on the return. Yeah, this is coming back. We're going to have to go all the way back. Probably the 10. Turn return. Holding. Receiving team number 98. 10 yard penalty. First down. Tracy, down to you. Well, Jim, as soon as Josh Allen threw that touchdown pass, he hobbled off, went straight to the bench, and the athletic trainers and doctors were looking at that left foot. They took off his shoe. They took off his sock, and right now they are taping it up. It looks as though they were also taping up that left big toe. Certainly something to watch, Jim. Absolutely. He's uh, taken a bruising today, but he's still going. 210 yards passing, 94 yards rushing. Thrown and rushed for a touchdown each. And now Fournette as they start back at the 10. Good tackle coming up to making that play is Poyer. These safeties, I can't talk about them enough, Jim. Poyer, Hyde. And they work so well together, Tony. Yeah, they, you're exactly right. It's a great point. They hide the coverages, and they're a tandem, because if one guy gives up what it is, you can't really tell, right? So they, they're in unison, and they're smart. They don't let you get to the correct play. You know, and then all of a sudden they can tackle and they can cover. Five interceptions, three interceptions. Second and nine. Tried to bring pressure. Was well protected. Drunk. Has it stripped out of his hands. Jackson, Jackson would able to get a hand in there and take it away. And there's Jackson. You know, we've seen him today. Just the poise at the end of the play. Don't put that left hand around his head. Like earlier and right there, it does a good job. They're both battling. Boys, 8.21 to go. You got a third and nine, and Bucks are pinned. Ooh. If you make a stop here, the Bills could have excellent field possession. This, this is for Sean McDermott. Give me your best pressure. Get everyone lined up. Show him something he hasn't seen. Put these guys up in there. One guy comes, the other guy runs over. One guy comes, the other one runs over. Pass incomplete. And there are no flags. McDermott and company fired up. That was intended for Godwin. Well, and someone's in his face. You see 91 Oliver with a great pass rush just making it. So Brady has to throw that ball and miss his hand. And Sean McDermott knows how huge that is. This is, wow, what just happened? This has been three minutes. It was 17 points. Now they got the ball back. And let's see where they'll start. It's a short kick traveling near the 50. And bouncing backward, it's down at the 46. So the Bills don't have that far to go with 8.08 remaining and taped up and coming back out. Well, this did not look possible here a little bit ago, but Josh Allen hurt. All of a sudden, coming back out on the field, 27 to 17 by himself today. He's got 94 yards rushing, 210 yards passing. It's been difficult. It's been a tough environment. The other team's offense has been up and down the field to start the day. But all of a sudden, you find yourself with eight minutes to go on the road, down 10. You have timeouts. Can you go beat Tom Brady in a huge moment with the playoffs hanging in the back? That ball batted down at the line by Adams. We sometimes forget we expect Buffalo to be just fine. They're in the playoffs no matter what, right? Right now, they're in the seventh spot going into today. They're seven and five. If you lose, technically, they're not in the playoffs if it started tomorrow, which is crazy. See, you really well done. This is a monster game for Buffalo, as last week they were playing for the division lead. You lose two games in a row. All of a sudden, whoa. the optics radically changed. Second and ten. Hangs in there and finds Beasley, who goes for that first down yardage. It'll be close at the 36. See if he stays in here. Right there. It's going to be short. Yeah, barely, though. 
got two downs to get the yard. Yeah, I'd still just play normal pretend. Third and one, I'd still get it going. I mean, this isn't for me like, hey, we have a ton of time still. It's like, you got to pretend that Tom Brady's going to get a first down at some point in this game still left. Not going to be a touchdown. Josh Allen really clutch in the fourth quarter this year. Nice nifty run because that could have been a disaster. Singletary was able to sidestep Winfield for a loss and pick up the first down in the end. They haven't won all the close games, but Josh Allen has played well. Five touchdowns, no picks in the fourth quarter, third and completion percentage, 71.6% completion percentage in the fourth, Jim. That's what you want. You're going to have to do it here, and you know how you do it. You find the guy who's one-on-one -on -one and fire it to him. Who set it down? He's going to take off. Here, Paul, they closed in on him in a hurry. Sue was there. Uh, I don't love that. Quarterback's a little hurt. Now let's run him again. <laughs> it's yeah. like, okay, he's already like giving you everything he's got. Design play? Yes, it was designed. There's a field goal is in play. To get it down to a score. Complete. Beasley, first down. Yep. Pressure. Find Beasley. If they ever blitz a guy, they can't double him. Just find him. He'll be open by a little bit. Have him run just an option route. The game can be quite simple. Remember Edelman, Welker, all these guys? Like, White takes another hit. Ooh. Well, he's having a hard time putting any weight on that foot. First down, 23 yard line. Protected better than ever today. Pass sideline. Caught by Diggs, and he was in bounds. This, First down. This is incredible. He doesn't even get to throw into this. His body weight and momentum. Look at where this ball lands. Oh, we got a drag in the toe. 12-yard pickup. He threw that against pressure, Jim, and he couldn't follow through really. And he just flicked his wrist on a 20-yard out. He knew coming out he had the arm like very few have. From the 11. On first down. Go underneath, Singletary. Unable to I thought, pirouette and get away from White. I thought Josh Allen got hit that too late there or someone went low. Oh, there is a flag. Personal foul. Roughing the passer on the defense. Half the distance of the ball. Automatic. First down. It was Golston who hit him. Was he blocked into him? Yeah, if he's blocked into him, it's not a pen. I just saw Josh go down and it looked like it was a low hit. But if you're blocked into it, it's not. It's a very interesting call. I think he talked <laughs> the ref into it right there. Kind of goal to go situation at the four. Going to move Knox in motion. Goes to the end zone. Too high. A little too high. To Gabriel Davis, 4.57 remaining. That's a pick play that's covered really well. Good job at Murphy Bunting. Getting over the top. Knocks at the top. Just caught a touchdown on the last series. He loves to go to him down here, but looks another way. He's got Davis, and the Bills have another touchdown. Well, here we go again. Pressure off the edge. Got to get the ball out quick, and Davis runs a quick route inside, and the leverage, watch. He's got inside. It's just reading the field, and all of a sudden, Davis, that's that tight split. When they have a tight split, Jim, and all out pressure inside. You can't give that up. You got to make him go wide side of the field. Easy throw and catch. What a drive. I think we got a game. Yes, I know we do. And this a crucial extra point to bring it to three. And it is good. Two Buffalo touchdowns in four minutes and 14 seconds. 
all of a sudden. And I'm watching the Minnesota Pittsburgh game on Thursday night. Never felt like it was going to be a game. And then the Steelers mounted a remarkable run at the end and got down to one last play that, well, the pass was absolutely perfect, but the safeties converged and the ball got knocked loose. But they almost stormed back. And then you get this one. Same thing. It never felt like all day you ever felt Tampa Bay was going to have to fight to the end for this one. You're not kidding. But here they are, just up three. Next week, the NFL and CBS regional action, including the Titans, who pitched a shutout today. Got four picks for that defense. Rayburn and company coming up the bye with a win. They'll be at Pittsburgh, and we'll be there too. Plus other regional action, all starting at noon Eastern with the NFL today, next Sunday on CBS. Again, Tampa Bay had a 21-point lead in this game. Brady all time in games that he's led by 21 plus is 106 and one. The only time he lost a 21 yeah. point lead was in 2011 against Buffalo. Wow. You're just saying what's going to happen? Is that what you just said? Oh. There's no foreshadowing. That's Tampa no. Fans that's no Romo Stranamos. Just a little goodness. history factoid. Here's some headlines from today. The Ravens. Lamar Jackson went out with a sprained ankle. That's what Coach Harbaugh called it after the game. He said, we'll see tomorrow. And they lost to the Browns, who had to have it. The Chiefs crushed the Raiders, starting from the first play of the game on a defensive touchdown. Dallas. They saw Washington storm back, but hold on to win it and widen that lead in the NFC East. And the Titans shut out Jacksonville. This place just got loud. A lot of Bills fans here coming in for this game. And there's a lot of fans knew this was a big it's one. Not, it's not Bills fans, it's Bills Mafia. I heard it. Right? Let's go to New York for an update. 14 unanswered. Back to Jim Nance. And thank you, fellas. And if the Bengals win that game, they will be in first in the AFC North because of the head-to-head -head win already this year against the Ravens. Well, that's true. We'll play them again in two weeks. Here's a second and five. Wide open. First down, Evans at the 40. Well, you had signs of life. You've been slowing them down here. Mike Evans, you got to get up. Now you have to play man-to-man. -man. This is where having White would have been huge, right? Just makes him get turned around 30. Didn't ask for a big one. Jackson's done a good job today, but going against White's a little bit more challenging on slant routes and some others. First down at the 40. And Brady, I mean, this is the one guy that's like, you get, you get the ball back, it feels like Buffalo, they can't be slowed down right now. Fournette picks up four. Now the timeouts. Bills do have the three timeouts. Yeah, you got to use one here. This is that point. You don't let it go another play. Whenever they hand off, you use it. So you got three timeouts. Now down to two, obviously. This is where Tom Brady, everyone's great little comebacks. He just kind of ends it, right? It's like this drive just takes up four minutes all of a sudden. You get it back with like 14 seconds, you know, down three or six. But... The Bills have had success challenging some of these receivers. The problem now is Tampa's seen it. And so now you're going to see the adjustment for them throwing it quicker. You're going to see wide receiver screens. You're going to see the slant to Mike Evans. A sprinkle in a run or two. But they're going to go ahead and win this game. They're hanging it off to the right if they get a great look. Otherwise, the wide receiver screen. It's a second and six. Brady still has it. They're chasing after him. He lofts it high in the air. It is just a bit too far for Coughlin. And now you got third and six and only used a few seconds off the clock. This 30 to go. This is unbelievable. Tom Brady decides to do this. The offensive lineman, and that ball's just outside the reach. But watch this offensive line right here. Go ahead and play that. They are running that run to the right. Tom Brady just decides, because they have that, it's like an RPO, but this is one of the rare teams who actually fakes it and throws it deep. <laughs> But that was a handoff that he decided he wanted to take the shot on. A little aggressive there, but here we go. And okay, the Bills take him off the field. Here we go. Brady in trouble. Somehow avoids the sack and gets the first down. 
There is a flag back in the offensive backfield. Are they going to get a hold? This is it right here. Or is it on Brady? Someone hitting him in the head because they did that too. There's a lot of things they could call. Which one's it going to be, though? Because the game hinges on it in a lot of respect. Fair fouls against both teams on the play. Oh, we got to do it again. Holding. Defense number 58. Holding. Offense number 76. Penalties offset. Third down. How about the escapability that he showed right there? I know the play is nullified, but it looked like for a moment that they had him. Well, this is, you know, we can't tell you over but his poise right there Jim like the poise to get out of it and then reset in the pocket as if no one's around you and get your eyes downfield now here we go third and six I mean they're gonna come up Tom wants information here he's gonna pretend like he's gonna snap it go up and tell them but it's loud in here it's hard now he's got to communicate to everybody he's gonna come and take the back Milano coming after him and he got to him Matt Milano with the sack at a critical juncture. Well, this is an unbelievable job by Milano because you know he's coming, but watch him come right here. The line's trying to get. It's just a simple stunt late and a great design play, but that's why I said he can peel off and take the back or keep going. Milano reads it. Timeout called by the Bills to stop it at 316. We'll get the ball back and have one timeout plus the two minute warning. And that's a stunt right there. So usually you see two D linemen, right? Remember earlier when Shaquille Barrett, they had the defensive end goes inside and the defensive tackle goes outside. Well, you just do it with a linebacker that time and a D lineman and it turns out big play. Pinion. Big hang time here, comes to the 18. Stevenson secures the football and has four bucks bring him down at the 23, 47-yard boot. 0-4 in one-score games, and they've had a couple of games where they had the football at the end and could have won it. This is an incredible comeback, right? It's just, oh, this wasn't even possible. 21 down on the road against the Super Bowl champs. Wow. Complete dig shoved out by Davis. And that clock's going to keep running. This is big because what happens is if your body momentum is going backwards, the clock keeps going. That's why Sean McDermott, usually everyone thinks like you can go back in the huddle, but he's like, no. The clock's running because you got to be moving forward or going out like even out of bounds for them to stop the clock. Second and six. Took a lot of time to pick up four yards. If he comes, just throw it to Beasley right here. Down. Going to take off for that first down yardage, and he's got it. And he's got a 100-yard rushing game with it for the third time in his career and the first time in two years. Well, he's looking for Beasley right there. Beasley just takes a hair too long on his route. But what the speed of that. I mean, you just see when he gets going, right? I thought he had a bum ankle. Yeah, yeah, it's hurting him terribly. Seven, no, 11 carries, 101 yards. Diggs is on the sideline. Saw him shaken up on the last series. Well, they've been bringing him off the edge consistently. If he does, it's tough to block. Here's a first and ten. Knox unable to get out of the tackle of White. Pick up a four. It's a good job getting that ball out too many times in the first half. Try and make a play instead of just getting rid of it. I'd get a ball snap before this right here. Takes his back out snapped. here. Can they get a snap here real quick? I would. You need this time. Go. Not in time. One second too late. Two minutes. Who would have thought a little over an hour ago that this would be the drama at the end? We're back at the home of the Bucks, who have won their last eight games on this field, including a Super Bowl, and they had a 21-point lead in the second half of this one. Now down to three with two minutes remaining, and the Bills surging. 
Here's a second and six. Allen on the run. Throws it incomplete. They've outscored the Bucks 21 to 3 in the second half. Well, a great job. Pierre Paul not allowing Josh Allen to roll right. He is deadly when he rolls right with that cannon. That was a point of emphasis for this defense coming in. Make sure he only rolls left. But right now, third and six. You got the champs. You got the ball. Yeah. Oh, this is so oh, difficult. Look who's playing safety. Yep, Richard Sherman right there coming down. That means he's guarding one of these two on the bottom. Helping out at least. To give him some time. Pass caught, but way short of the sticks. Beasley brought down by Cockrell. Ross Cockrell came in the league as a draft pick by the Bills back in 2014. Makes the tackle. Timeout called by Buffalo. Cockrell's done a good job today. Two or three times coming in, making a good tackle. And Easy runs an out route there just a little bit late. So what are you going to see out of Buffalo on fourth and four? Well, the first thing you got to do, I mean, this has nothing to do with, like, you have plenty of time. It's just a field goal. So you go with your best play. Now, usually you have two plays when you walk up. So you go in the huddle and you say, Here's what we're going to do. We're going to run our quarterback power to the right. Okay, guys? Or our quarterback whatever run. If they line up in this, we're going to go to this play. Let's go see what they're in. And then everyone look back at the quarterback. Look back at the quarterback. See what he's going to give you. Quarterback looks. I like to play. Let's go ahead and do it. Bills have got to have it. Here's Allen's pass. Caught. Davis fighting for the yardage. What an effort by Gabriel Davis. And they've got a new set of downs. Pure heart, all heart and will right there. Because this was going to be short after he was got it. Now he's short. And he out wrestles Murphy Bunting to get it by a yard. He's going to be stopped right here. There wow. he is trying to stay in bounds as well to get past the sticks. Davis with a big game. Got that touchdown earlier now. A hey, game hey, saving hey. one right there. This is interesting. Now you have the ability as a quarterback to work the middle of the field. You can run the ball at the quarterback. You can take a shot outside. First down, here comes the blitz. Cock roll. Dix was open. Oh, that was like the pass that Brady completed to Evans in the first half where he saw he was going to take a hit and he lofted it up in the air. Well, watch right here. This is the pressure. You're going to go ahead and come right at He has to let go of this ball. You see the middle field's wide open, Jim. It's where you want to work. The problem is no routes are in there. Good job getting rid of the ball. Diggs is coming out. Yep. Two points. Kumaro comes in. Second and ten. Pass is complete. Down to the 39. And that's Cole Beasley. And they have the ability, this is the RPO we talked about earlier. You have the ability to run it or throw it. Picked up 15. Yep. And now you have your opportunity right here, Jim. You can actually take your shot, but you got to get it out quick. Rush five. Pass complete. Beasley thrown down quickly by Winfield. And only picked up a couple. Yep. Diggs comes back into the lineup. Just sitting out one play. I think we might have gotten a timeout by Tampa. What do you think of that? Well, I think it's because everyone's tired. I mean, you look at their guys on their side. I mean, they just want to make sure that, that, to me, you take the timeout to get them a break right here, and I think it's smart. A reminder that kickoff of the Bears and Packers game is at 8.22 p.m. Eastern on NBC tonight. Doesn't feel like there's a tonight. It feels like it's 10 o'clock right here. <laughs> Got ourselves a game. Nah, I mean, really, as a Bills fan, this is unbelievable. A minute and four to go. You have the ball down three inside of Tampa's territory. 
You're coming off that Monday night game where you had the ball late, no, trying no. to drive, trying to beat the Patriots, unable to cash in, get shut down on downs. Now you got a chance to atone for a lot of those miscues. There's Knox, bucks it out of the air, slips to the tackle. He's racing down to the 14. He got away from Richard Sherman. Watch right here, Knox, he's blocking, he's blocking, no! He's not blocking, he's faking blocking. And that's why they get him open. What a play call design. Picks up 24, and out from the 15, with 38 seconds. Over the head of Knox this time. Good job getting the ball out. Josh Allen get, took another hit. Barrett comes in and hits him. That internal clock is sped up. They're in field goal range. You got to protect right now. Josh Allen, no throws that have a chance of being intercepted. No chance of a strip sack, right? I don't want to take a sack and throw it away. That's okay. So basically, no sacks, nothing that has a chance of being intercepted. Other than that, you can throw anywhere on the field. Allen over 300 yards passing, over 100 yards rushing, leading this team. On a remarkable comeback, and they complete it. Here's second and ten. Rolling out. Dancing down that sideline, and then he's out of bounds near the five, I believe. And actually, there is going to be an official marking out near the seven. Just short of the first down, and look at the heart. I mean, you could just see it just oozes right in this game. It just, the competitive nature and the will and desire. Definitely out there. I think he was out earlier, too. In fact, they spotted at the seven. Picks up eight. It is third and two, Tony. You still could throw this ball inbounds and be short. But the biggest thing is if you got to know if it's first down, right? You could run this. You could throw it. Quarterback power. Yeah. To me, it's your best play you got. It's your quarterback. They're going to make the throw right away. They're coming after you. Here you go. To the end zone. To Diggs. They were tangled up, and there is no flag. Wow. Davis was on the coverage. There was a lot of contact. And now they'll bring the field goal unit out. It looked like a lot of contact. We'll see up close right here. Davis, they allow some contact down there on these fade routes, but that looked... I think that was a penalty, Jim, don't you? It sure looked like uh, maybe a hold. It's close. I mean, just when he grabbed that shoulder pad, it feels like he got a lot of it. And now for the tie from 25 yards. Tyler Bass. Bass's kick is good. Dead center into the net with 22 seconds to go. And we are tied at 27. They've made it up all the deficit. Yeah, this was not possible with... I mean, there was 11 minutes to go. Were they down 17 with 11 minutes? They I were believe 27 that was to 10. Yep. And then there's that touchdown drive that only took a couple of minutes. Driving them down, hitting Davis on a touchdown. And then they got a three and out. And they, they got they the ball back. back with two incompletions. And then hit Knox for the touchdown. Mm -mm -mm. Tonight on CBS begins with 60 minutes and NASA's plan to look back in time. Followed by the CBS original movie, A Christmas Proposal, plus NCIS Hawaii tonight on CBS. Now, what do you do on the kickoff here? You got Brady and the Bills know that Brady has one timeout to play with. And there's that incredible stat we mentioned earlier. The only time he's ever lost with a 21-point lead. It's the last time Buffalo beat him. Brady, 32-3 and all-time against the Bills. And the last time Buffalo beat him was that game 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to squib kick it. That's what they going to do. The reason is they want you to return it and take some time. Yeah, that's it. Garden. Walk down aggressively at the 16. That's why if you're Brady, you go over and tell him if they squib it and you don't get it out by like 15 or 10, just let it roll back in there and down at the end zone. That's 17 unanswered points in the last 8.45. 24 to 3 at halftime. They've outscored him 24 to 3 in the second half. Going to down this, move into the fourth. We're moving to overtime. That was the fourth. Yep. Overtime it will be. 
Well, Buffalo's been rolling. I mean, really, the punt, fake punt that didn't get it, they got stopped. And then the other one, they just had two short yarders they just didn't go for, which actually turned out to be a great decision by Sean McDermott on the punt to not go for it. I mean, what a comeback. Overtime rules, 10 minute period, two timeouts per team. All the reviews come from upstairs. Okay, overtime rules, gentlemen. We're going to play one 10 minute quarter where both teams are going to have an opportunity to possess the ball unless a team that receives a kickoff scores a touchdown on that drive. Well, during that drive, the defense has a score of their own, either a touchdown or a safety. Fourth quarter timing rules, two timeouts for each team. No coaches' challenges, all stoppages are upstairs. Same coin, heads, tails, heads, and a tails. Your choice. Tails. Choice is tails. It's tails, Buffalo. He's made some good calls today. And that's another one. Bills will get the kickoff in overtime. They'll receive when we come back. Back in overtime, Jim Nance and Tony Romo, Tracy Wolfson, and our crew on hand here in Tampa, watching a game that suddenly went from what looked like a foregone conclusion to a thriller. Bradley Pinion handles the kickoff chores for the Buccaneers. And again, a rookie is back deep, Stevenson, with the return, which he will not have a chance to make a play. This game summary, the Bucks opened it up. They got that touchdown by Fournette. Brady threw this touchdown to Evans. Third quarter, Allen from 18 yards out. Their first touchdown, later comes back. It's Knox, it's Davis. Field goal ties it, 22 seconds to go in regulation. And here we are in overtime. Starting over, nothing else matters. All of a sudden, you got to go ahead and figure out what the defense has been doing all day, and you're going to see Singletary for about three. To me, you got to stick with what you've been doing if you're Buffalo here in the second half, right? Tampa. How about this? Fourth player of all time with 300 and 100 <laughs> in a game. That's including postseason. Joins Russell Wilson, Cam Newton, Lamar Jackson. Some of these top quarterbacks, they're just never out of a game. You know what I mean? They oh. can just turn it on. When they do, it makes it really difficult on the opposing teams. Pass pulled down by Beasley. They'll have a third down coming up and need about four. He's really done an excellent job, you know, in that second half, really the whole half of taking what they're giving them, right? It's like that pressure early, he threw a little check down, that, like that one right there. You're looking deep, but you're doing it quickly. You're not trying to create the big play every time. That's been the biggest difference. Okay, this Tampa Bay defense. Can they make a play? You got Diggs one-on-one. -on -one. Pass wide of the mark. Sideline looking for a flag that does not exist. Well, that should have been a flag. I mean, it looked to me like Davis pulls him when he tries to come out of it. Look at that left hand, 24. Yeah. Close. Let's see. Just watching it from up top here, it looked like he grabbed him, but I could see maybe why they don't call that one. Did it affect the play? I think it was the right no call. Yeah, I think it was It was a little bit bang bang, and it wasn't like it affected a ton, right? Didn't pull his momentum completely there. Bucks now. Wait the punt return. Garden over his head. And what a punt it is. Wow. Hawk pins him at the six on a 63 yard boot. <laughs> well, I, I always thought if you could get a three and out in overtime, right? It's like such an advantage, right? Because right? now it's just got to be 80%. Goal. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. But all of a sudden. Now you pin him back and he's got to go. 
Yeah, because the, you give it to him at the 30 or something, they only need two first downs. Now he at least has to get four or five first downs. Well, yeah, you need 50, 60, 60 yes. yards to get into field goal range to win it. We're going to see how aggressive right away. I mean, this is like last time they came out, they just handed it off right here. This time, same thing. Burnett trying to get ahead of steam that was shut down quickly after a gain of about three. Getting up on the ball, the yep. success they had in the first half. Rare for inside the 10 yard line to do that. But you're keeping the same personnel on the field on defense. Second and seven. Hits Godwin, who stopped about a half yard short. Edmonds. Here comes a quarterback snake. If he gets him, good. he's like, oh, I don't want that play. quarterback snake. Allen, Sherman, all looking up. See what Leslie Frazier's defense can do here on third and one. Well, this is interesting because you're going to line up. Remember that first play, Jim, and they just handed it off right here to the right? He's looking right now. If they condense the line, he's not going to quarterback sneak or hand it off. Burnett. He appears to be stopped. And the it's line judge on the far side, though. It's going to be close. I think he may have given him a good spot. Yeah. Let's see where this spot is. You have to get barely to that line. Ooh, this is going to go. Oh, yeah. Now that was. I think he got it. Really close. And again, all reviews come from upstairs. And we do have a whistle. It's too big Previous a play, play not to take a second look. On the field, is it the one game the first time? Here's a question for you. I don't actually believe it's that big of a play. You know why? You would go for when it. When was the last time you Tom Brady it. didn't get a first down on a quarterback sneak? <laughs> Can you ever remember in any situation? Uh, I remember one, year, in the game? one time he had a stretch of 69 oh, he, consecutive just successful kidding. first down sneaks. I actually do remember one. 07, the Ravens, when they called timeout, they had Tom Brady stopped on a quarterback sneak, but the coach called timeout, and they had to go out and do it again. And he's got to kind of get right to that hash right there. That's why I think it's a first down. That one little moment where he surged an extra bit. Well, I just don't think you can overturn that by any of that. Tom feels pretty convinced looking up at the jumbo screen. Sean McDermott does done an excellent job. The adjustments. So this is right down the line. No, no. That's it right, right there. there. That's the one where it's really close. Little surge. And you got to remember, he just has to get to the front of that line if you look behind. Mm -hmm. Wow, well, we just got the audience from an overtime game in Cincinnati where the Bengals went down and kicked the field goal. And then the 49ers come back and score a touchdown to win the game in overtime. Ayuk from Garoppolo for the victory, denying the Bengals the chance to take over the division lead in the AFC North. For all of you just joining us, we've seen here a 21-point comeback by Buffalo in the second half. Down 24 to 3 at halftime. Buffalo is one of the most complete 7 and 5 teams. You know, I've seen in quite some time because guess who was seven and five last year? I was going to say Tampa After reviewing Bay. The play, the ruling of a first down stands. Last year, Tampa Bay was seven and five. At this point, made a few adjustments. Boom, they go on. It was very difficult. Buffalo has that same kind of ability as we see this play again. Because there's very few teams, Jim, that are second in scoring on defense and fifth in scoring on offense. That's complete right there. First down at the 16. Brady going for a deep pass. Never turning around was Wallace. And they flag him for it. The penalty. We haven't been showing his hands. I mean, the biggest thing. I want to see what. Defense number 39. 
Ball deflects and spot a foul. Automatic. So, First down. So if you watch Wallace, he doesn't really pass for fear. Watch his hands right here. But quite well, you know what, Tony? It's odd because when Wallace is chasing Evans, Evans realizes Wallace doesn't put his hand or his head around. Wallace or Evans grabs Wallace and brings him to him. To me, that's either nothing or you've got Wallace actually grabbing the defender. And to Gina, this is going to lose big yardage. Hitting Fournette out of the backfield. Poyer was on it all the way. And they lose seven yards. So second and 17 coming up. See that team speed? I mean, that's just that's what they do to teams. That's why it's hard. Rock gets a screen and Poyer just beats him to the point. Wow, that was huge. Well, now you've got a serious shot of here. You, you know they're not going to hand this ball off. Tom Brady's not giving this one up. <laughs> Here's Brady from the pocket. Back to Gronk. Slicing through the defense. Stopped about three yards short. About 24. Johnson with great effort to stop Gronk and possibly get them into a fourth down because that looked like a for sure first down at the end there. 14 yard gain puts Brady over 300 for the game. Six minutes to go in overtime. Third and three. This is it for me. This is the play of the game. If you want a chance to win Buffalo, it's right here. You got to get it off and try and get them into a situation of whether they want to punt or not. But if they get this first down, Jim, Tom Brady's going to get them in field goal position. He's the first 300-yard passer against the Bills defense all year. And here he is on third and three from the pocket. Connecting. That's Perriman. Taking it all the way for the win. The first time he had been targeted the entire game. Rashad Perriman. What a play design and the patience of Brady. Five-man rush and the protection up front was phenomenal. Showing off the depth of this offensive unit. Tom Brady with a soft touch pass. Throws it. Making his eyes move Edmonds. Edmonds, that's not even his guy. He's a helper. But he couldn't read Tom's eyes and feel it. Watch. Edmonds right in the middle. He looks, Tom's looking left. He's just moving Edmonds enough so he could throw the game-winning touchdown pass. And how many touchdowns is that for Tom Brady? <laughs> Number 700 all-time comes on the game winner. Regular and post. 700 it is. Perriman. He had not been a part of the story all game long. Another bitter loss for the Bills. A 94-yard touchdown drive, the final 58 yards. Brady to Perriman for the victory. And Tom Brady Sr., the original, celebrates with his pals who have come out here from San Francisco with him. Unbelievable game, and he just watched. This was a huge playoff picture type of game. Tampa still has an opportunity for the number one seed, and this is huge because you got to go through Rodgers or Brady or a team that has kind of gone under the radar with only two losses who's very difficult at home. Wow. What a late afternoon window. Some of you saw Garoppolo lead the 49ers to victory, and here his mentor able to pull it out in overtime as well. Bucks over the Bills, 33. 27 is the final score. Tonight on CBS begins with 60 minutes. For Tony Tracy, Gene Steratore, Jim Nance saying so long from Tampa. You've been watching the NFL on CBS.